Hello team, welcome back. And this is a new section we have started about the Docker images. This is the first lecture of this particular section and here we will learn about the Docker images introduction. So let's start with. So in this particular section, we are going to learn a complete concept of the Docker images, which will cover the building of Docker images, the deployment of Docker images in the Docker, then we will see the images management like how you can create your images, how you can build your images, how you can tag your images and how you can keep your images and how you can upload your images over the internet. We will also learn about the Docker Hub central repository. So Docker have a central repository where we can upload our images. We will see the management of local images and how we can build the local images. So these are the things we are going to learn and discuss in this particular section. Let's start with the very basic. What is Docker image? So in a very simple and layman term we can define in Docker everything is based on the images and an image is a combination of file system and the parameters. So basically when we are talking about an image, we are talking about the file system and the parameters that image will accept when you will execute that particular image. So suppose you are working on an application and you want to create the Docker image of that particular application. So your image will contain the binaries which you are using inside your uh, application and it will also accept and it will also include the dependency of your application. After then it will accept some run kind. After that it will accept some runtime parameters so that you can execute your image. Images contains the data required to run the images, right? So we have already discussed about it when we are creating the image. So we need to wrap the binary files. We need to wrap the dependencies and we need to wrap the metadata or the data which is required to execute that particular image. Suppose you want to list all the Docker images available on your machine. For this you can use the Docker command Docker images. There is another important point about the images. Images don't contains the operating system and operating system packages, right? It is the responsibility of the Docker engine to execute your image, right? Docker engine will basically deploy over some kind of operating system. So it will share the kernel of that operating system and execute your image. Any Docker image will not contain the complete OS and OS package to execute your application inside the Docker. Now we will discuss about this particular command we have seen to list out the Docker images. For this I need to go to my console and this is the machine where I am executing my Docker engine. I will execute a command Docker PS. See nothing is running right now. So to verify the images which is present on my machine I will execute a command Docker images. Hit enter button. And you can see all the images are being listed over here. So we can see we are getting the repository name. We are getting the tags. We are getting the image ID, the created date and the size. So this is the repository name. Repository name basically is the image name, right? And tag is basically tag is associated with the image which will define the version of your image. So this is NGNX Alpine image, right? The image ID is AAE467. Triple E double seven D. So what is this image ID? This is a random generated image ID which will be generated when you download any image. Over here we are also getting the time that image is basically downloaded three weeks ago and size is 17.7 MB right now we have another image of NGNX which is NGNX latest version which have the different image ID which also created three weeks ago but the size is different you can see the NGNX the both images are basically the NGNX but the Alpine one have 17.7 MB and NGNX latest image have 109 megabyte in size. So here there is a huge difference in the size of NGNX Alpine and NGNX latest. So NGNX Alpine is a image which is specific to Alpine Linux right NGNX latest image is basically applicable with all kind of operating system of which is Unix based or Linux based. So here we are getting an ample enough data to identify the image. We are getting the image name. We are getting the tag 
ID and the time when the image was basically downloaded and the size as well. So this is the way how you can list out all the images which is present on your machine. So thank you team. Thanks for your time. Hello team. Welcome back and today we will discuss about Docker Hub repositories. So we will see where Docker kept all the official images and where we can post upload our local images on Docker. So we are going to learn about the Docker Hub. Then we will see and take a tour of Docker Hub official site. We will find out some official images which is being provided by the Docker community. We will download the images. We learn about the images tag and their application. So let's start with. So Docker images can be downloaded from the Docker Hub. So in the last lecture we have seen we have a few images on a machine when we which we will download it when we was executing Docker run command. So basically these images was basically downloaded from the Docker Hub. Right. Image is something which can be committed with changes and have multiple versions. So if you don't have a specific version number then the client defaults to the latest. So we have seen the tag was latest in some kind the tag was alpine in some other way the tag was some different. So basically we can also push the image on the Docker Hub and if we are not defining a specific version to our image then by default Docker takes the default as a latest. Now first we will discuss about the Docker images differentiation. So very first we'll talk about the base image. So base image is the type of image that have no parent image. So usually the images like the operating system, Ubuntu, BusyBox, Debian, these are the base images and base images is basically uh, a big image in a size, right? Now second version of image is called the child image. So child image is something which is built on base image and providing some additional functionality right so suppose you have ubuntu base image then you have another image which is which is basically using the ubuntu images but they are providing their own functionality they are providing some uh, interactive cli they are providing some interactive colors right so these are called the child images the third type and important type of the images is official image so images that are officially maintained and supported by the Docker community are called the official images. These are typically one word images. The next category comes user images. So these are the images which is basically belongs to the user like you and me. The images which belongs to some specific organization. So these images are being created and shared by the users and they build on base image and additional functionality. Typically these are formatted as user slash image name. So we will see the different different images. We will see uh, the image name how the official image uh, display inside the Docker Hub and how the users image display inside the Docker Hub. Now let's take a tour of DockerHub.com. So you need to go to Google in a Google type Docker Hub hit enter. So you will get a very first site which is the official Docker Hub site which is https hub.docker.com. I will open this site. So this is the default page when you will open the first time the Docker Hub you will land on this particular web page. If you don't have the Docker Hub account then you need to create your account. If you have your account then you need to go to sign in and sign in on your account. So I already have an account so I will sign in my Docker Hub account. So you can see. I am basically logged in inside my account. So these are the repositories which I have pushed on the Docker Hub. Maybe if you will log on, it may be possible if you will log in first time on the Docker Hub account, you will get some different UI, right? Now, over here, we are getting a search icon. So here we can search on our images. So, so suppose I want to search an image of Nginx. I will type nginx and hit enter. Right now I am getting all the results of nginx image and you may be surprised I am getting close to 43,000 results of nginx images. So it means 
on hub.docker.com we have total 43000 plus images which is nginx image so this is a question how we will identify the image which we can use so always remember the first link most probably the first link you will get the official image which is a single word image name you can see this is the only image which is in the single word image name rest all of the image you can scroll they are basically have some slash bit before the image name see and over here we are getting the description which is saying official this is another image which is j wilder nginx proxy and over here it is getting public and automated build so it has the description as well but we are getting only one image which is the official image also we can see this image has 10k plus stars and 100 and 10 million plus downloads as well right suppose i want to explore this image so i need to click on the details once you will click on the detail you will get all the details of this particular web images so this so this is the benefit with the official docker images with the of with the official docker image you will get the proper documentation right so over here i'm getting the official repository repository name is nginx and here is the star if you will click this star then you basically marking this image is helpful right over here we are getting different different tags and the repo info so short description is official build of the nginx now we will talk about the tags and respective docker file links so basically these things which is being mentioned over here these are the versions so 1.15.5 is the version of official docker nginx stretch file right 1.15.5 is a perl specific and alpine specific is 1.15.5 alpine right we have the stable as well we also have the stable release as well and stable release is also available for the stretch for perl for alpine over here we have the quick reference links as well architecture we are supporting and a short description hosting points how you can execute this image like the external ports internal ports and complete configuration so in the description of the official image you can find a lot of things so i would recommend you to go with this particular description and learn about the complete documentation of docker images it will help you to understand the docker image and many other things related to the docker image now let's go back to the image and let's click on this particular explore link so once i will click this link so basically you will get all the official image which is being supported by docker community so here we have few images which is being supported by the official docker community which is nginx alpine busybox redis httpd apache server mongod ubuntu postgres node.js mysql and a lot of things over here right so these are the images which is basically supported by the official docker community we have the software engineers developers in the docker organization which is basically monitoring these images which is basically developing these images and have a fully tested image for the customer now let's discuss how we can download the image so to download the image you need to execute a command docker pull then the image name but we have already seen we have a different different versions available for the image so suppose we have a requirement to download a specific version of a image then how we can download it so we can download the specific version of an image with this command docker pull image name colon then the version name so let's see how we can download the images so i will go to my hub.docker.com and suppose i want to download my mysql image so i will open mysql official image and over here i am getting the complete description of my mysql so by default when you will download the image on your docker host machine it will directly download your image from the hub.docker.com you don't need to configure any url inside your docker engine or docker hosting machine 
this is already pre-configured inside the docker that when you will pull an image then by default it will pull the image from the hub.docker.com so i will go to my docker hub machine and execute a command docker images to list out all the images and these are the images which is basically available and i don't have any mysql image right here right now suppose i want to pull out mysql image right so i will execute a command docker pull and image name which is mysql just hit enter and basically it will start downloading of your latest mysql image see it is being downloading the mysql image and very soon the process is completed i will clear out my console and again execute the command docker images so you can see an image of mysql is being downloaded and it is being downloaded latest image of the mysql and over here we can see the total size of mysql image is 485 megabyte right now i will go to my official page so this is the latest image which is basically downloaded and this is 8.0.13 now suppose i want to download some older images i want to download the mysql image of 5.7 so i will go to my docker hub and execute command docker pull image name colon the version right hit enter so you can see 5.7 pulling from the library mysql so it is basically downloading the 5.7 and it's done if i will clear out my console and again execute the command docker images so we can see i have two repositories or two images of mysql one is latest and another is 5.7 and we have a pretty much difference in the size of both images right so this is the way how you can download the image from the official docker hub site right so docker hub is just like a github where you can basically put your images and you can download or check out the images we have already seen the differences between the official and user images the base and uh, child images we have discussed about the complete configuration of the official the version of the official images right so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we will discuss about docker images and their layers so let's start with so in real time docker images is basically a series of layers and docker used the union file system to create the layer and then combine them to create a single unit or to create a single image each layer have their own specific use and each layer is have a union file system which is independent from the other part of layer so, so if we assume that a docker image contains a five layers like a five layer of union file system then the base file system is a independent unit right it is an independent unit which don't have any dependency on the other parts the layer 2 will have the dependency on the layer 1 and in the series the layer 3 have the dependency on layer 2 layer 4 have the dependency on layer 3 and layer 5 has the dependency of layer 4 so these are union file systems they have their own work plus if layer is the base layer if the layer is the base layer then it don't have any dependency but the upper level layer have the dependencies that lower level layer should be present to work or to run the docker image right the union file system allows files and directories to separate file system known as branches so basically union file system is something where we will club out a particular utility with the dependencies and we can execute them if you want to get a layer of an image then you can use old command docker history then the image name this command will show you the different layers the commands used in each layer and exact size of each layer in a docker image so we'll go to our terminal in a terminal first we we'll list out all the docker images present on my docker hub so i will execute docker images command and it will list out all the images so over here we have different different images suppose we want to get the layers of mysql latest right 
so i will go over here and type docker history after the docker history i need to enter my image name and i will enter my sql hit enter then you can see i am getting a pretty detailed output over here so these are different layers which this particular image my sql image contain so you can see this image the base image is basically updated 12 days ago right but the latest was updated 3 days ago so basically this is the base layer so by this we can see the most updated layer will be present at the top right and the least updated layer will be present at the base this is the layer basically which was updated earlier and this is some kind of add file which have 56 megabyte size after then we have a command bash then group add hyphen r mysql user add something and you can see there is a different different layers for each command and each images and each file so this is a separate union file system this is a layer 2 which have their own file system this is layer 3 which have own file system layer 4 which have own file system and so on so right now uh, many of you may not be able to understand it but once we will create our own image and we will build it you will get it thoroughly right so, so team by this way you can find out the layers of an image suppose we want to find out the layer of nginx then you can execute command docker history enter nginx hit enter then you can see the nginx command have the different layers right there is a file which is 55.3 mb so basically the base layer is an ubuntu system this is the ubuntu library after then in the next layer it will go to the bash then executing some commands right we can see so this is the base layer then we have different different layers and we can see the layers present in the mysql are different from the layers present in the nginx now if you want to find out a complete metadata of your image then you can use the command docker inspect after the docker inspect you can enter your image name and hit enter so basically it will show you the complete metadata of your image it is showing the id of your image then the repo tag which is mysql latest then some repository then repositories parent comment created at this particular time and other information over here you can get the complete information of your image the path is user local has been user local has been mysql major version is 8.0 and mysql version is 8.0.13 debian based system and you can get the other details as well so if you want you can go through the complete inspect command and you can find out a detail about your image so that's all about the docker image and their layers in the coming lectures we will see how we can create the layers and how we can build out a custom docker image so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about docker images tagging or we will see the importance of docker images tags in docker so let's start with so very first we will try to understand what exactly are the docker tags so docker tags are just like a version of your image right whenever you perform a git commit you define a particular specific message and git specify a commit string with your commit so in the same way docker tag is basically a version of your image that convey a useful information about the specific image version or the variant so basically when you are saying we are tagging a particular image then basically we are defining the version of that particular image of docker file docker images don't have the name so basically docker images don't have any name if you will execute a command docker images to list out all the docker images then you can see we don't get any column like name let's see so we are on a console execute a command docker images see we are not getting any column specifying the name we are getting columns like repository tags image id created and size so repository is the name of parent directory which is the name of file system you have and tag is specifying the tag of that particular repository image id is id which is being generated when you push your image over the 
Docker Hub. So basically, Docker images don't have any name. So what is the combination of the Docker image and tag? So tag always associated with the latest image ID. So tag associated with this particular image ID. So this particular image ID has the tag 5.7. This particular image ID has the tag latest, right? So Docker images don't have their name. This is the repository. This is not your image name, right? So tags specify with the image IDs. Now next question which may comes in our mind. So how we can tag the Docker image? So there are two ways. First, you can tag the image when you are building your image, right? So during the building process of your image, when you are pulling your image over the internet, over the hub, then you can specify the tags. And the another way of tagging is with the help of Docker tag command. So image can be tagged explicitly as well with the help of command like Docker tag. For this, you need to execute a command Docker tag specify your image with a specific tag. It is optional and specify your target image name with a specific tag. This is also an optional. So let's see how we can execute this command. So we'll go to terminal and over here we can see we have a list of images. See, right? We have a list of images. So we have an image Ubuntu. We have a single image of Ubuntu, right? Now suppose I want to tag my Ubuntu image with a specific name. So I will execute a command docker tag, tag specify the source image name, which is Ubuntu. Now you can need to specify the target image name. Suppose I'm defining Ubuntu test hit enter and it's done. If you will again execute a command docker images, then you can see a new image is being created right a new images is being created with the same name like we provided ubuntu test this has the same size because we copied that particular image and renamed it and you can see once we didn't specify the tag after the image name it took the latest right? so suppose you want to create a specific tag you want to create a specific tag then you can use a command like this Docker tag and suppose I want to tag MySQL 5.7 image so I can see MySQL 5.7 is present in my local I can tag it like MySQL unshul dot test right hit enter again enter the docker images command and you can see a new images with custom tag test is being created which is similar to mysql 5.7 so by this way you can explicitly tag an image let's move to our next page so now we have another question when you don't specify the docker image tag so what happened when we don't specify the docker image tag so we have already seen if we are not defining any tag with the docker image then by default it takes the latest tag right so docker has the implementation if you are not defining your custom tag then it will tag the default tag latest with it right but it must be tagged in a docker now we need to understand the consequences if we are not defining the tag so in the previous lecture we have discussed about the docker image layers now suppose you are working on an application and you are creating the docker image of your application and your application is using Ubuntu Debian base system in a base image. So you need Ubuntu Debian base image as a base image in your application. Now we assuming that Ubuntu is not providing the tag with their images. Then you need to choose the Docker Ubuntu latest image in your base image, right? So every time when your customer build your images, it will download the Ubuntu latest image. And if Ubuntu is pushing their code regularly on their images then it may possible at some extent your application will be break because your code is not tested with the latest code of the ubuntu but if ubuntu is providing a tag with their images suppose ubuntu is providing the tag like 3.0 3.1 3.2 and you have tested your image with ubuntu 3.0 so you will specify that image 3.0 in your base image so every time 
your image will be built with your customer then it will download the tested image of the ubuntu instead of the ubuntu latest so there is a lot of lot of benefits of using the tagged in a image it will help you to maintain the version of your system it will help you to maintain the production like image testing like image staging environment image or queue environment image so you can specify the image tags with the help of the tags you can specify the version which may be compatible with the different different kind of environments so maybe uh, one of your image may be compatible with the production environment one of your image may be compatible with the testing environments one of your image may be compatible with the mac os one of your image may be compatible with the linux maybe uh, one of your image may be compatible with the linux uh, Ubuntu base one of your image may be compatible with the Linux CentOS so there is could be a different different kind of application which is required over here so it is the best way to tag your image if you are tagging your image then you are maintaining a specific versions of your image which is fully tested and qualified by your testing team so this is the benefit of using the tags in an image thank you team thanks for your time Hello team, welcome back. And today we will see how we can upload a Docker image. So we have already seen how we can download the Docker image, how we can tag the Docker image. Today we will see how we can upload our local image to hub.docker.com. Let's start with. So to upload an image to hub.docker.com, first you must have the account on hub.docker.com. So first I will open out the Google and check do I have the account on hub.docker.com so on a google i will type docker hub hit enter and very first link you will get about the hub.docker.com i will click this link if you don't have the account you need to create your account over here right if you already have an account click on the sign in button and verify your credentials so i will enter my email id as a username and then i will enter my password so we can see we have successfully logged in in my account so we have seen we have an account on hub.docker.com if you don't have the account you need to create the one first so docker cloud uses docker hub as its native registry for storing both public and private repositories so it means docker cloud is using the docker hub as a native repository for its all the private and public images once you post your image it will be pushed on the docker hub and they will be available for the docker cloud to use so again the question comes in how we can upload the images on docker.com for this first we need to enter a command docker login from a terminal what it will do it will ask you to enter the username and password so basically over here you need to enter your dockerhub.com password and username right once you will successfully log in you need to enter a command docker image push your username which you have on a hub.docker.com and then your image name which you want to upload right so let's see how we can upload an image on a hub.docker.com so we are on our terminal and first i need to list all the images which is present on my docker machine so i will enter command docker images and here is the list of all the images which i have on my machine this is the image which we have created in the previous lecture and suppose I want to push this image on hub.docker.com So I need to enter the command docker image push Then provide my image name which is Ubuntu Test Hit enter So you can see it is preparing to upload my image on my hub.docker.com But at the end I am getting the error denied request access to the resources denied so, so first i need to set up a authorized session with my hub.docker.com for this i need to enter a command docker login hit enter and it will ask you the username of your hub.docker.com account for this you need to go to your hub.docker.com account and over here you are getting your username in my case my username is anshul devops right i will again go to my terminal enter my username hit enter now i need to enter my hub.docker.com password and it's done it is saying 
warning your password will be stored unencrypted in this particular file. Configure the credential helper, remove this file. Login success. So if you will see, you will get your password at this particular location. If I will show you cat, then enter this location, config.json, hit enter. Then you can see over here you are getting a JSON and in this JSON we have the authorization key. So this is my authorization key. Right? So if this key will be loosed, if you lost this key, then anyone can log into your account. Right? So if you are using in a secure environment, in a production environment, then after your upload, you have to successfully remove this particular key. And how we can remove this key? You need to execute a command docker logout. It will automatically remove this particular key, this particular JSON from your machine. Right? Now I will try to upload my image with the command we was executing earlier. For this, I will clear out my console and again execute the command which we was executing earlier. So I will execute a command docker image push then my image name hit enter. And you can see it is pushing my image over the hub.docker.com. And it is saying requested access to the resource is denied. Why it is not uploading my image? Right? It is not uploading your image because your image naming convention is not correct. If I will again tag this image in this particular way, docker image tag Ubuntu. This is my source image. Now I will tag Anshul DevOps slash Ubuntu test or anything, whatever you want. Right? Hit enter. Docker images. So you can see a new image Anshul DevOps slash Ubuntu test is being created. And if I want to upload this particular image, then I would be able to enter command docker image push. Enter the particular image name. Right? Hit enter. And you can see it is uploading your image. So what is the reason why it was not uploading my earlier image and why it is uploading my current image which I just renamed and it's done. It's all done. Right? Now we need to understand the reason. So we have already discussed about it when we was discussing about the official image and when we was discussing about the unofficial image. So for this I need to go to my hub.docker.com and suppose I will refresh my browser. Then you can see a new image will be present over here. See Ubuntu test is being present over here. Over here we are getting the latest image which I just uploaded. Why it just accepted this name initial DevOps slash then the image name. Why it was not accepting the Ubuntu test? Because, because single word image name is just allowed to the official image of the Docker. If you will search for any image like Ubuntu, then you can see a single word name is just allowed to the official images. This is official, this is official, this is official. Rest all of the images will be with the slash. And before the slash, you have the account name, and after the slash, you have your image name. This is the same reason I was not able to upload the Ubuntu test this image and I just uploaded Anshul DevOps slash Ubuntu test, right? So this is the important point which we need to remember when we are creating the image. Now I will explore my image. So I will go to my hub.docker.com, go to dashboard and click on the details of the image which I just uploaded. So over here I'm not getting any description. I'm not getting any anything else because I know I didn't provide, right? So right now we are just testing how we can upload the images in the future lecture. We will build our own image and we will upload it, right? I will go to the tags and you can see this image was pushed two minutes ago. Then over here I'm getting the latest tag. Over here I'm getting the latest tag, but you can see at the time of upload, I didn't provide any tag. So by default, it took the latest one. Now suppose if I will change the tag of this particular image. I will again execute the command docker image tag. 
specify my image name then again specify my image name but with a specific version like 1.0.1 hit enter clear out my console again execute the command docker images so we can see another image with the tag 1.0.1 .1 is present over here right but you can see the id of all these images are same because they are just copied which either with each other right i will again push my image docker image push specify my image put colon specify my version 1.0.1 .1. hit enter and it's done now here we need to notice a major update over here i'm getting a message layer already exists layer already exists layer already exists this is the thing which i didn't get when i first time uploaded my images so by this way we can understand docker internally verify that where is the change and we don't have any change in the layers we don't have any change in our file system so it will not upload the earlier file system to the hub.docker.com and the same mechanism will be applicable for the download as well if you are downloading some image and it don't have any change in their file system there is a change in the version or in the tag then it will not download the all layers or the complete image it will download only that part which is different from the previous one or which is different from the existing one right if you will change anything in the file system and you will upload it then it will show you the change over here right but you didn't change anything in the file system that complete file system is present on the hub.docker.com so quickly docker identified the image is same it's just there is a change of the tag it just uploaded the same image with the tag so at the runtime it just changed the tag the image data is same and this is the most optimized way to keep the images right now if i will again go to my hub.docker.com and refresh my page so you will get another tag over here one dot or dot one right so the same image is present with the two tags the two versions first is latest and second is one dot zero dot one so this is the way how you can upload your images this is the way how you can log in to your hub.docker.com from the console right now suppose i have done my job so i will execute a command docker logout hit enter and see removing login credential from this particular location right if i will again show you cat root dot docker dot config dot json hit enter then you are not getting your authorization key your key is being removed so always remember when you log in to your account from some unknown machine over unknown secure over unsecured networks over some other servers then please then you must have to log out your account to remove your authorization key otherwise it will be misused right so this is the way how we can upload our own images on the hub.docker.com with different different versions with different different names with different tags and what data is actually being uploaded on the hub.docker.com if data is already exist there then docker identify the differences and it will upload only the difference or the delta so thank you guys thanks for your time hello team welcome back this is a new section where we will learn about how we can build our own custom docker images for this first we learn about the docker file docker file is a file which will be used to create the basic images or the custom images in the docker file first we will go through the basics of the docker file like what is the docker file and what is the use of docker file to create or build your custom images so when we are talking about the docker builds we are talking about the docker images then docker can build the images automatically by reading the instruction from a docker file so first to create the image we need to define a docker file which have all the instruction which is required to create the build automatically 
this docker file is a text document which contain all the commands and the instructions which is required to create the docker image right these commands can be called by the user on a command line as well a docker image is nothing it is just a read only layers which is basically defined inside the docker file right. so in the form of instructions docker file have different different layers and these layers will be used by the docker to create the docker image right and docker image will only contain the delta we have already discussed about it when we was updating our last image on the hub.docker.com then we have seen the unchanged part of the docker image was not uploaded right we have, we have seen when we changed the version and uploaded the image again then we get the message layer already exists and layer already exists so it means docker will automatically consume the delta which is a difference between the current image and the previous version if we want to create a docker image from a docker file then we need to execute this particular command we need to execute docker build hyphen f then we need to provide the path of my docker file in my machine so this is the very basic introduction of the docker file now we will learn about the format of the docker file in which format you can create the docker file what are the options available inside the docker file how you can build your own images with the help of the docker file and we will also go through some official docker files which is available on the hub.docker.com so thank you guys thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about different different instructions defined in the docker file so let's start with so we have already discussed that docker file have the instruction that are used to create the docker images to understand the complete concepts of the docker instruction and docker file first we will see and sample docker file on hub.docker.com so i will so for this we need to go to google and type docker hub Open the Docker Hub website and log in your account. So we are on the hub.docker.com dashboard. Over here, we can search for any official image. Suppose Hello World. So this is the official image of the Hello World program. I will go to details. And in the details, in the sample tags, we are getting a link of Docker file, right? So if I will open the Linux Docker file in a new tab, then it will open the GitHub location of your Docker file. So this is the content of the Docker file which Hello World application have, right? So over here we have instructions like from, copy, and CMD. If we again go to the hub.docker.com and search for another If we again go to hub.docker.com and search for another image like Tomcat, hit enter. So here is the official image of the Tomcat. I will go to details. And inside the details, we have a different different images. So suppose I want to open the Alpine version Docker file. So I will click this link. And in the new tab, you can see over here a Docker file of Tomcat Alpine version is being opened. You can see, right? This is the complete Docker file of Tomcat Alpine version. And here we have the different different instructions like from env, env, run, work dir, env, env, then again the env, then run, right? So these are the instructions. So the things or the commands which is displaying in the red color are the instructions of a docker file now we will learn about these one by one right so very first we will learn from the from instruction so from instruction initialize a new build stage and set the base image for subsequent instructions what does it mean so in every file from instruction will be the basic instruction and that must be present in every docker file so from should be the first instruction which will be defined inside the docker file which will create the base image for the subsequent instructions 
right so valid docker file must start with the from instructions so if you are not starting your docker file with the from instruction then definitely you are implementing an invalid docker file with the help of the from we can download the base image over which my image will be built right so to build a docker image first we need a base docker image and this base image can be any valid image like it like it could be the jesse uh, linux image it could be the alpine it could be the debian unix system so from with the help of the from we are basically mentioning a specific image and a version which will be used as a base image to execute the subsequent instructions format of the from will be like this from then we need to define the image name colon then the tag right it means the version of that particular image so from is the very first instruction which we need to mention in every docker file if we again go to the google and open up the link we have opened so you can see this is the tomcat docker file and very first line is from and in the from what it is doing it is downloading the open jdk 7 jre alpine image right so this is the base image to execute any subsequent image which is present inside this particular docker file right so this is the very important instruction in any docker file from is a very important instruction in any docker file now let's learn about the next instruction so next one is the label so label is something which add to image to organize the images by project or recording of the license information right so label is something we are defining label for my image it could be anything right and for each label we need to define some key value pairs so there could be the example like this like we are defining a label com dot example dot version and the version is 0.0.1 .0 beta right we can define another version like the vendor and vendor is acme incorporated right so with the help of the label we are defining the key value pairs which is a metadata of my image now next instruction is run which is another important instruction in a docker file run instruction will execute any commands in a new layer on top of the current image and commits the results so what we are getting from this particular statement so there are two things first with the help of the run you can execute the command on a current image right the current image means the image which is already built with the docker file right and it will commit some results so suppose we have a docker file in which first we define the from then we define the run and inside the run we are executing some linux uh, commands right so these linux commands will be executed on that particular base image and the resulting commits image will be used in the next step of the docker file so what is the output or what is the throughput of the run command that will be used in the next step of the docker file so we can take an example here suppose we are downloading the ubuntu 14.0 form then we are executing a run then we are executing a command apt get update where we are where we are, where we are basically updating the packages of my ubuntu with the help of a run command then i will again execute a run command to install the curl on my ubuntu base image 14.04 so with the help of the run we can execute the commands on our image right and the output of the run command will be used with the subsequent instructions in a docker file now the next important command is the cmd which have the equal weightage in the importance as the from command so cmd instructions should be used to run the software contained by your image along with any arguments so with the help of the cmd we are basically executing the container we are basically executing the application inside the container right the application which we have built inside the image with the help of the cmd we are executing that application and inside the cmd we need to define the executable commands and what kind of arguments my application is accepting right this could be the format of the cmd cmd then we define the executable then can be defined n number of parameters which is which basically will be accepted as an argument by my application right there can be only one cmd instruction in a docker file so this is the another important point like we have 
one from instruction which is the first instruction in my file in the same way cmd could also be one and cmd could be the last instruction in my docker file if we have two cmd instruction then the last one will be execute right last one will take the effect the main purpose of the CMD is to provide the defaults for an executing container. So with the help of the CMD, we are defining the commands which will execute my application with the default parameters, right? If there are some hard code parameters required, we can define these parameter inside the CMD as well. Else we can ask for these parameters from the user as well. Now we will talk about the expose. So expose instruction indicates the port on which the container listen for the connection, right? So with the help of the expose, we can define the ports where my application will execute. So we have seen when we was running the nginx, we was running the nginx on port 8080. So that port 8080 or port 18, which is internally a uh, container is running on that can be defined with the help of the expose. After the port, you can also define the protocol over which protocol that port will be opened, right? The format of the expose would be like this expose, then you need to define the port. Now the next thing is the environment. So environment is the instruction to set environment variables for your application, right? So with the help of the environment, we can define the environment variable for my application. That could be anything that could be the path of some specific things that could be the username that could be the password some default password anything which is a anything which my application is treating as an environment can be defined with the help of the environment instruction and the value of the environment instruction should be key value pair right as we have discussed that environment will used to update the path environment variables for your software inside the containers now another thing is the add so add instruction copies new files or directories or remote file URLs from source location to your file system, right? And the default format of the add would be like this add, then you need to define the source, then you need to define the target. So with this particular command, add all the files starting from home to my dir in my containers, right? Now the next one is volume. So volume is another important instruction inside the Docker with the help of the volume. We should define expose the database storage area. We can define the mount points of my application. We can define the configuration of the storage. We can define the files folder created with the Docker file containers, right? With the help of the volumes, we can also define the persistent data location and the mount points. So if you are not able to understand the persistent data and mount points, we will discuss these things in very details when we build our own images. Another thing is the work DIR. So as the name is self explicit work DIR means my working directory. So work DIR instruction sets the working directory for any command like run CMD add instruction and it follow the Docker files, right? So these are the instruction which basically an important instruction to create any Docker file, right? Now suppose we also go to the uh, our docker file of tomcat and we will try to understand it. So here is the docker file of my tomcat so we can now we can understand it with the help of the from we are downloading the base image of the open JDK and the image tag is 7 GRE pipeline. After that I defined some environment variable like Catalina home and the location of this user local tomcat path Catalina home and bin right this is the path of my bin directory then i defined a run command make dir hyphen p dollar catalina home so i'm basically creating this particular directory right then i defined the working dir with the help of the dollar catalina home so this the bin would be my working directory right now again define two environment variables tomcat native library and ld library path so these are some internal paths then we again have the environment variable like this is some GPG key. We, uh, I'm not sure what uh, what it, I'm not sure what it's all about, right? Then another have the environment variables like Tomcat major, Tomcat version, and again some environment variable like Tomcat ZURL, Tomcat SCRL. Then have the run, 
right and inside the run we are executing these commands so if you have a long command you can divide your command with the help of slash right over here we can see it with the help of the slash the command is being divided into the parts right once the run command will be execute it is executing another run command right and exposing the tomcat by default on port 8080 see and after then it is executing cmd and is and inside the cmd what is my executable my executable is catlina.sh and what is the command or argument it will accept run right so once i will start my tomcat container it will execute catlina.sh that's it so this is the sample docker file and you can see here we are getting a lot of lot of instructions we have already learned in the same tutorial right so this is the sample instruction and significance of every instruction we can have in the docker file so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about how we can build our own custom docker images in the previous lectures we have seen the docker file we have seen the default commands which is present inside the docker file today we will use that docker file and we will create our own custom image so let's start with so we have already discussed about this in the previous lectures to create the docker images we need to create the docker file first so in this particular lecture first we create our own custom docker file and then we will see how we can create a docker image from that docker file that can be run as a container now we need to discuss about the syntax of docker build command so here is the docker build command docker build hyphen t then you need to specify your image name then the tag name and then the directory where your docker file currently presents now we will understand the detailed explanation of docker build command here hyphen t is stand for to mention the tag after the image image name is the name of image which you want to provide to your image you can provide it anything like nginx an image mysql an image so you can provide any custom name to your image then you need to tag that image so if you want you can specify the version if you want you can specify some custom tag to your image after this we need to provide the directory where my docker file present to build that particular image if your docker file is present inside the current directory then you can mention period like dot if your docker file is not present inside the current directory then you need to specify the path of your docker file inside your command so very first we will create our own custom nginx image and execute it but before create any docker file we need some kind of editor where we can create or edit the docker file for this in this particular training section we are going to use the visual studio so visual studio is a code editor tool which is being provided by the microsoft and in the recent days i am finding it a very suitable and very popular code editor right visual studio code can be used by any kind of programming language you can use the visual studio code with the c c++ python ruby php even with the jenkins file and docker file so first we will see how we can use the visual studio code to use the visual studio code we need to download this visual studio code from the given link or you can go to google and type download visual studio right so i'm on my browser i will type download visual studio you will get a lot of links over here you are getting a lot of links to download the visual studio and the very first site is the visual studio official site which is visualstudio.microsoft.com i will click over here and from here you can download the visual studio community version which is free professional version enterprise version and visual studio code free version as well so i will go with the community version right and i will download it it will download the executable file on your machine you need to extract that package and install the visual studio in your machine i already have the visual studio in my machine so i will open the visual studio so once you will open the visual studio you will get a ui like this right so this is the welcome page which you will get 
once you will first time open the visual studio so in the visual studio you will get a different different kind of options by this you can open the file explorer over here you can search for any kind of plugin which is required to run your code in the visual studio this will support the git control this will support the debugging of the files and over here you will get all the extension which you have installed inside your visual studio so right now i have the extension like docker python and sql server right so if you want you can uninstall the extension so suppose i want to uninstall it so i will uninstall the docker extension right and it's gone so if you want to create the docker file then you need to install the docker extension in your visual studio for this you can search for the docker press enter and you will get a lot of options like docker explorer docker runner but i will go with the official one and you will get the official one from the microsoft right so over here you can see this is being provided by the microsoft and this is the official docker extension from the microsoft if you want you can click this install button to install the docker extension in your visual studio or you can install by this particular install button as well so i will click this and it will install the docker extension in my visual studio code right if i will again go to the extension and i will minimize this search see docker extension is available on my machine right now what i need to do i need to create a docker file so i will open up the folder and i will go to any directory on my machine so suppose i will go to users my directory and over here i will go to training i will go to docker and build docker images so suppose this is the directory where i want to create my docker file over here i will click this particular link new file and i will create my docker file so i will mention docker file hit enter so you can see as i mentioned the docker file a docker icon is being presented over here a docker icon is being present over here right i will open up the docker file and here i need to mention all the things all the commands which i want to run inside my nginx so very first command is from so you can see once i started the typing i am getting the autocomplete i will hit enter and it is being completed automatically right so over here i need to mention the base image so i will mention ubuntu so i will mention ubuntu then i need to define the ubuntu image version so i will mention ubuntu latest right after this i want to mention some label after this i need to mention some label so if you are not getting the auto complete in your visual studio you can press control space to get auto complete in your visual studio over here suppose i need to define the key which is version and i'm defining the version is 0.0.1 again define the another label and suppose i'm defining maintainer and inside the maintainer i am defining my email id now what i did i have started my image from a base image of ubuntu latest then i defined the two labels the version of my image and the maintainer of my image right now i need to define some run right and over here i need to define the run command of apt get update and apt get install so first i will update my ubuntu packages so over here i mentioned the command apt get update and apt get upgrade followed by hyphen y why i'm mentioning the hyphen y so that it will not ask me the permission at runtime now i will mention another run command and over here i will install the nginx in my ubuntu base image and in my next command i will install the nginx on my ubuntu base image right so i will insert a command to install nginx so it is apt get install nginx followed by hyphen y again hyphen y so that it will not ask the permission at runtime then we need to expose some port where my container will accept the traffic in a nginx so we'll enter expose 
and suppose I want to expose port 80 right so at, at port 80 my nginx container this is default container which we are creating right now so it will accept the traffic on port 80 if you have any confusion you can accept the traffic on any port right like 90 or anything whatever you want right after this i need to insert the last command which is cmd right and here i need to define the commands to start my nginx container over here i need to define the commands nginx hyphen g and the daemon of mod so you can see this is our custom docker file to create the custom nginx container i just need to save it now i need to go to my terminal on my terminal i will execute command docker ps to verify is there any container running on my terminal i will execute a command docker ps to verify is there any container running on my machine or not and you can see one container of nginx is running on my machine so first i will stop it so docker stop then the container id or the container name my container name is awesome swords hit enter again execute docker ps and it's gone now we need to create our own image but before this we need to verify that how many images are present on a machine so we'll execute docker images and right now only one image is present on a machine and the repository name is nginx tag is the latest right so now we will create our own image by command docker image build hyphen t then i need to specify my image name so i will specify this custom nginx colon now i need to specify the tag so i'm specifying 0.0.1 now you need to define the path of your docker file so my docker file is present at a root directory so i need to define the path like this that's it and execute this command so the command is docker image build hyphen t this is my image name this is the tag which i want to attach with my docker image and this is the directory of my docker file hit enter button and you can see it started building your custom ubuntu images file right and all things are being processed so we have to wait until the complete processing will be done and it's all done right now we need to move one by one so we will go to the starting of this processing and over here you can see the step one out of seven is started so every instruction which is mentioned inside your docker file over here docker will take it as a step so this is the first step for the docker label is another step this is another step so by this mean we have the seven step in our docker file one two three four five six seven right and same information we are getting over here that step one out of seven is being executed so first it is started from a step one and in the step one and what is the step one step one is from ubuntu latest it downloaded the latest image of the ubuntu then it started the step 2 over here and it defined the version then in the step 3 it defined the maintainer of that particular image right the next step is a step 4 over here we are updating our apt-get packages and it's done over here right here we have the step 5 we are basically installing the nginx right so nginx took time then we have the step six we need to find out see over here we have the step six we expose our nginx at port 90 then we have the step seven which is the last step the nginx cmt right if i will clear out my console and after the processing i am getting the image is being successfully created this is the image id and this is the image tag label custom nginx 
0.0.1. So I will clear out my console and again execute the command docker images. So you can see another image of custom nginx is being created over here. See the size of my custom nginx image is 181 megabyte. If you want to execute this image, then you can execute it by docker run hyphen D hyphen P. You need to specify on which port you want to access your nginx. So suppose I want to access it on port double four double four. Then at what port the container will get the traffic and we have defined the port nine zero right then you need to define your image name which is custom nginx right so this is the port which we can access the nginx from a host machine this is the port where nginx will get the traffic and we have modified the port to port 90 right hit enter uh oh we are getting the error message because we didn't define the version this is not the latest ones right so we need to define the version as well hit enter and see a container with this particular ID is being started. If I will execute a command docker ps, then a container is running. So this is the way how we can create our own custom images and how we can run our own custom images. Now suppose we want to change something in our custom image. So we will again go to over here and suppose we want to expose the port 80 instead of 90. And I want to add something uh, some comments over here, right? So I will add some comments in my docker file So I have added some comments over here before every instruction So I have updated few comments over here in this particular docker file So if you want to comment out something then you can use hash to comment out the line I have added the comment because I will upload this file in the resources of this particular lecture so that you guys can get it right and I have changed the port. So the only change which I did is just change the port from 90 to 80. Right? I will save this file. After save my file, I again need to rebuild it. For this, I need to again execute the same command docker image build hyphen T, then my image name, which is custom image, nginx put colon. Now I need to change my tag. I will change it from 001 to 002 then define the directory where my file is present. So my file is present inside the root. Hit enter and this time you can see it is quite fast. It doesn't take much time as compared to previous one. Why it is not taking the time? So this is this is the advantage of the docker. This is the beauty of the docker. That's why the docker is very fast in the deployment. So by default Docker identified where the change is present, right? And it executed only that particular step. It didn't execute any step which is not changed, where we don't have the change. So Docker keep all the things from its own cache and rebuild a new image. So we don't have any change from the Ubuntu base image. So it's use its own cache, you can see over here, and didn't build this particular step. The step which is built is the only sixth step you can see rest all of the steps are from the cache Right and it is just building the sixth step where we have changed the port See removing the intermediate container this and generating the new ID It just built the step where the change is present. That's why docker is so fast in the deployments all the step which is being built previously is not being built again so docker is so optimized in a building the images so if you change anything in any step then that particular step will be built next time when you will generate your image right now i will clear out my console and execute docker ps so our container is running first i need to stop my container so docker is stop then provide the container name which is friendly hensburg i stop it Docker PS, uh oh, Docker PS, and you can see only one container is running, which is nginx official container, right? Clear out the console now. Docker images, 
and you can see a new image is being present over here with the new ID. Now, if you want to start our container on a new image, which is custom nginx 0.0.2, .0 then we need to execute the command docker run hyphen d hyphen p. Then you can define any port like 8081 where the host can access this particular nginx and I need to define 80 because in my new image the port is 80 which is listening the traffic right after then I need to define my image name dot to hit enter and you can see container is being started with this particular ID if I will execute a command docker ps then we can see the container is running right so we have started our container on a port 8081 Suppose we will go to our browser and try to access this particular container, right? So we are on a browser over here. You need to mention the IP of your machine then put colon and port 8081 because this is the port where we are accessing our container, right? So this is my machine IP after then I put the colon and the port where I'm running the container hit enter and you can see nginx container is running. So team, this is the way how you can create your own custom images and how you can build your images and how you can execute your images, right? So thank you team. Thanks for your time. Hello team, welcome back. And today we will see how we can extend official Docker image and customize it. So let's start with. So today we are going to get the official nginx image and we are going to modify it. So we will do some customization of the official nginx image. Then we'll create our own image with the official nginx one. Right. So let's go to the terminal. So we are on a terminal. So first I will execute ls. So in my current working directory, I have two files. The first file is the Docker file and second file is index.html. So what we are going to try we are going to replace the official nginx image in index.html with our custom one. So let's see what content do we have in our index.html. So in our custom index.html file, we have a single line text. And that text is also in a h1 format, right? So we are going to replace the index.html content of the official image from this custom file, right? For this, we need to modify this Docker file, right? So we'll go to our Visual Studio and modify this particular Docker file. So this is the custom Docker file which we have created in our last lecture. Today, we will modify our Docker file a bit, again rebuild the image and use it. And today, what we are going to try, we are going to extend the official nginx image and replace the index.html file with our custom index.html file. So to extend the official nginx image, first I need to modify my from. So in my from, I need to take nginx latest. Why I'm taking the latest? Because every time I will build my images, it will get the latest nginx image from the Docker Hub. Let's leave the versions and label as it is. We are not going to change anything. We don't need any run command. Right, because we are not going to execute something. Instead of the run, I will mention work dir. And inside the work dir, I need to provide the current working directory. So over here, I need to provide the path of the index.html inside the official nginx image, which is user share nginx html so this is the path inside the official nginx image where index.html file can be found right i will update my comment as well after this i don't need this run command and i don't need the expose port as well what i need i need to copy my local index.html at a this location for this i will use a command copy Provide the source, source is index.html and the destination. Destination is also again the index.html. What we are trying to achieve? 
we are trying to replace the index.html file which is present at this location inside the official nginx image with our custom index.html image right now you need to save your file your docker file now over here you can have few questions right you can see we are not providing the cmd command we are not providing any run command why we are not providing any run any cmd command because the run command and the cmd command is already present inside the official nginx image what we are trying we are just providing the label providing the working directory where we want to work and what what is the work we are going to replace the official index.html file with my custom index.html file that's it right so what it will do this docker file will build a new image which will execute and once you access the nginx server it will show you the default content which you have mentioned inside your index.html file instead of the official one right so let's see how we can build it so we will back to our terminal execute command ls so we have only two things over here we have the index.html file and we have the docker file which we just modified if i will show you the content of the docker file so you can see this is the content so we have done these kind of changes in our docker file right clear out the console now we need to build this image and how we can build the image we have seen this in the last lecture so we will execute a command docker image build hyphen t then provide the image name put colon and then provide the tag name after this i need to provide the directory where my docker file presents so my docker file present at a root hit enter and you can see it's done so it's pretty fast why it didn't take much time because most of the things was already present inside the cache it just get the things from a cache change few things and built a new image so you can see latest nginx was also present in my local so this was basically get from the cache it just added the label right so first it added the label version then added the maintainer right then updated the work directory then copy this so just five steps are being executed in this particular image if i will execute command docker images so i can see my nginx hyphen custom version 0.0.1 .0 is present over here right clear out your console and let's try to execute our image so for this i will execute docker container run hyphen p provide the host port 8080 provide the container port then the image name tag then provide the version right hit enter now you have started your custom nginx image so to verify the change which we have done we need to visit the browser so we will go to the browser and paste our machine IP address in the address bar so we are on a browser over here I will paste my IP address of my machine then put colon then port 8080 because I have started my nginx on port 8080 hit enter so you can see you are getting your text hi thanks for being here you're running the custom nginx and we can see in the terminal as well that a new log is being generated over here so every time i will refresh my page refresh it again refresh it again refresh it again and go to terminal so see every time i'm refreshing the page a new log is being generated over here so it means my container is working right by pressing the control c i can stop my container right press ls and we can verify if I will show you the content of index.html file, then this is the same content. Hi, thanks for being here. You are running the custom nginx. And we was also getting the same content on my browser. So if we again want to verify this, we can edit this file. So I will edit this file. Right, go to the insert mode. And suppose I'm going to insert some text as well. Right, so I'm going to insert some new text. So I have added a new text in a heading 3. This is an official nginx image. We are building it for our personal use, right? I will save this file. Now what I need to do, I need to again build my image because 
my previous image has that particular index file index.html which was not modified which was the custom one we have modified our index.html so i again need to build my images for this i will again execute the same command docker image build hyphen t nginx custom and then i will update my version and i will update it 0.0.2 right hit enter so you can see only this step is being changed rest everything from the cache right using cache and we are getting cache over here just this step was changed because there was a change in the index.html clear out your console and again execute the container but this time we need to update the build update the tag so we are executing the container nginx custom 0.0.2 hit enter go to your browser and refresh your browser and see this text is being appended over here so our change are working fine so this is the way how you can create your own custom images how you can extend the official custom images and change them according to you right according to your specific needs according to your application right so we have seen how we can extend the official image how we can change it and how we can use right. them if you if you want then you can upload this image on your own account for this you need to modify this image name because uh, with your account your account username is mandatory with the image name and then you can upload it right so we have already discussed about it how we can upload the custom images on the hub.docker.com thank you team thanks for your time Hello team, welcome back. Until now, we have discussed a lot of things about the Docker images. We have discussed about the Docker images. We have seen the format instructions of the Docker images. We have already built our custom Docker images. So today I am posting an assignment for you, which you need to complete before move further. And in the next lecture, I will post the answer as well. But before go through the answer, before go through the uh, solution, which I will provide, you must try to execute you must try to solve this particular assignment by your own right so that you can test your knowledge you can uh, practice it and you can get more confident in building the rocker images so let's just start with so what we need to do we need to create a custom docker file so i'm expecting you will create your own custom docker file in which first you will get the latest python image from the docker repository right so we in the previous lectures when we was creating our own custom images so we was getting the images of nginx ubuntu this time you guys need to get the image of the python then if you are aware of the python programming then write down any simple program in the python language if you're not aware of the programming then you can get any simple python program from my internet right save that particular file in your local machine then you need to run that particular python program inside the container right so first you need to write down or download the python program save it in a file keep that file inside the docker file build your images then run that image after then that particular file the python file should be executed inside your container then tag and push your images to the hub.docker.com after this remove the images from your local and again execute your image so that it can download the image from the hub.docker.com and execute it so this is the assignment which you need to do before move further right so it's good for you if you practice this assignment i will post the answer in the next lecture thank you guys hello team welcome back in the previous lecture i have posted an assignment for you today we are going to solve that particular assignment so let's start with so we have the assignment where we need to create the custom docker file which will get the latest python from the hub.docker.com right so we will see how we can do it for this we will go to our visual studio code editor so this is the docker file which we have created in some previous lectures so instead of if you want you can create the new one or you can edit this particular file as well right so very first i will remove this comment it may be mislead many of you so 
so very first we need to get the latest image of python so in a from i will remove the nginx from a python so i'm getting the latest image of the python after this we can leave this as it is like label version is 0.0.1 .0 and label maintainer is anshul chohan so we will leave it right after this let's forget about this for now before this we need to create a custom python script which will execute so i have created an python script for you so here is the python script which is very simple so here i am getting a variable n which is the value of n is 15 executing a for loop right and then again executing a for loop so, so this upper for loop is basically creating a parameter right and this lower for loop is again creating the parameter so once i will execute this particular program so this will create a parameter like this see right this will create a parameter like this so we need to execute this program inside a container for this i need to modify my docker file right and what modification are required in my docker file so first i have defined the version of my python now i need to add this particular file my script file inside my container for this i will use a command add then i need to provide the source what is the source source is my script.py which is the file name which is my python script file name my underscore script.py right then i need to provide the destination so suppose i want to keep it at a root directory inside my container right after this i need to provide the executable command right and to execute the python script you need to insert a command cmd then over here i need to provide the parameters so i will execute the python program so i will enter a command cmd python then dot which means the current directory and my script name that's it right so this is the custom docker file which will download the python latest image define the maintainer and version add your script at the current directory and then execute your script i will save this file right now i will go to my terminal over here i will execute a command ls so we can see we have three files docker file index.html which we have created in the previous lecture and my script.py which is present inside my current working directory if you want you can verify your docker file content by help of command cat then your file name this is the same file which we have generated right now i need to create the image of this file how we can create the image so to create the image we can use the same command docker image build hyphen t then i need to provide the name of my image so i will provide custom python program or say python program then i need to provide the tag which is 0.0.1 .0 then the directory where my docker file is present right which is present at a root hit enter so you can see it is done right it's all done so it has created and get everything from the local cache right i will clear out my console and execute a command docker images so you can see a python prog image is being created right and python latest is also being downloaded on my machine which is 923 megabyte in size right now what i need to do i need to execute this particular image to execute my program for this i will execute this docker container run then you need to provide the image name which is python underscore program then the version right hit enter over here we don't need to provide any port or anything else because we don't have this kind of configuration inside the docker file we just need to execute a program which we have already defined inside our docker file hit enter and it will execute your program see it is printing the complete diamond structure which we which we have programmed inside my script right so that's so you can see how simple it is you can execute anything inside the docker right so we have completed till here now we need to tag and push our image on hub.docker.com 
delete the image from a local and again execute from the hub right so let's go to the terminal so to delete the image first i will list out the images right and i will execute a command docker image rm remove hyphen f for the force then i need to define my image name which is python program version and suppose i want to delete this python program as well which is i just downloaded hit enter so you can see the image and corresponding containers are being deleted right if i will again execute a command docker images so i will not find these right now what i need to do i will again create the image with a specific tag and push it now what i need to do so i will again create the image with a specific tag and push it to my hub.docker.com account right for this i will execute a command docker image build hyphen t now to push the image on hub.docker.com i need to start my image name from my hub.docker.com account name for this first i need to verify the account name of my hub.docker.com account so i will go to google and open hub.docker.com click on the sign in button enter my username and password and log into my account now your account name would be display at the top right side of your web page so my account name is anshul devops right so i'll go to my terminal and i will provide my account name which is anshul devops then put slash then i need to put then i need to put the name of my image so i will put python underscore program then put colon and the tag so i'm putting 0.0.1 right after this i need to provide the path of my docker file hit enter right clear out your console enter command docker images see your image is being created the size is 923 megabyte now we need to push this image on my hub.docker.com for this i need to execute a command docker login i need to provide the username which is my account name which is anshul devops provide the password login success now i need to push my images how can we push your images for this i will execute a command docker push then image name with a specific tag hit enter so it is pushing my image to the hub.docker.com so you can see all done right my image is being pushed on hub.docker.com i will go to the directory now i will go to my hub.docker.com account and refresh it so we can verify the image is being present over here if you will go to details then you can see a few seconds ago this image was post right now i will clear out the console enter command docker images and remove my custom image from my local machine so docker image rm then the image name hit enter it's done clear out your console now i need to start my python script from my image for this i will execute a command docker container run then define the image name which is anshul devops slash python program underscore program then colon 0.0.1 so this image which we are mentioning over here is not present inside my local because we have deleted it right so now once i will fire this command this will download the image from my hub.docker.com account and execute that script hit enter so you can see right so this is the way how we can create our own custom images how we can push the images how we can play around the images so this is the complete uh, solution of the assignment which we have posted in the previous lecture guys if you have any question any doubt regarding the docker images docker file then you can put your question inside the question and answer forum and i will be happy to answer thank you thanks for your time
hello team welcome back in docker section we have seen the networking we have seen about the images we have seen about the custom images we have already discussed about the containers and today we are going to start a new section which will be about the data management of the containers so we will see how we can manage the data in docker containers so when we are learning about the docker when we are learning about the devops technologies so the docker container data management is an important aspect so first we are going to discuss what are the data management aspects which are applicable in the docker containers what are the problems and how we can resolve these problems right so let's start with so first we learn about the container data management then we will see what is the persistent data and what is the issue with the persistent data after this we will learn about the data volumes and in last we will learn about the bind mount points in the containers so these are the topics which we will discuss in very details in this particular section so we will start with the data management or the persistent data volumes right so first we will try to discuss what is the data management inside the containers and what is the issue with the persistent data right or what is the persistent data volumes inside the containers so till now we have seen how we can execute the containers right and we have seen we can execute anything any application inside the containers we can execute nginx we can execute tomcat we can ex execute sql right we can execute any application which is containerized right so when we was executing the container application we have observed that containers are immutable in nature when we have started the container so we was not allowed to change anything inside that particular container right suppose you have started the nginx image now you want to upgrade your nginx from version 1.8 to 1.9 so it is not allowed inside the running container so to upgrade your nginx first you need to stop your running container and start a new container right so by default the containers are immutable in nature once they are deployed they never changed right if you want to do something you want to uh, change some kind of configuration you want to upgrade your service then you need to redeploy that container right so this is the basic nature of the container so if you want to change some kind of configuration or we want to upgrade some version inside the containers then we have the only option we need to redeploy the container right we cannot do any kind of change inside the running container right so this kind of approach the immutable approach of the containers have a lot of lot of benefits but it also have a lot of drawbacks as well right when an application is running inside a container then it may possible that particular application or particular container is producing or it is creating some kind of data right then what we are doing with that particular data where we are keeping that particular data this is the issue right so by default all files created inside the containers are stored inside the writable container layer it means all the files or the data log anything which is basically generated inside the containers that is being written inside the container itself so by this statement we can say container is immutable right inside the containers our application is running our application generate some kind of logs our application generate some kind of data and that data is basically writable inside the container layer right that is not writable inside some kind of database that is not writable inside some kind of other third party tools right this is called persistent data problem why this is called persistent data problem because the data which is being written inside the containers that data will no longer exist once you will redeploy your container because the data which is being written by the container is persistent to that particular container when you will restart your container it will erase all your data and start new data generation right so this is called persistent data problem and this is a very critical problem when we are learning about the auto scaling applications right so the data which is being generated by the containers will not persist when the container will no longer exist right so it will be difficult to get the data out of the container suppose i am executing my database inside a container application right so it means whenever my container will stop my database will be raised but this is not a ideal scenario so how we can deal with that particular problem right and what is this particular problem called right so this particular problem is called persistent data problem when a particular container is generating a data that data is basically written inside a container layer right 
this is called the persistent data and this particular issue that data will not exist when the container will be redeployed is called persistent data problem. What are the alternative of that particular problem? How we can deal with that particular problem? We will discuss these things as well, right? So when we are dealing with that persistent data problem docker provides us two options, right? By this particular options we can contain the persistent files even after the container stops, right? So the first approach is called volumes and second approach is called bind mounts. So in the coming lectures we will discuss about the volumes and we will discuss about the bind mounts, right? But till now we just need to understand that the persistent data problem is related to the containers when container is writing something and that data basically need to be preserved when we are restarting or destroying the containers and we can do this particular thing with the help of the volumes and the bind mounts, right? So team in the next lecture first we will learn about the volumes then we will come up to the bind mounts. So thank you team. Thanks for your time. Hello team. Welcome back. In the previous lecture we have discussed about the persistent data problem. Today we will see how we can resolve the persistent data problem with the help of the volumes. So let's just start with. So first we will try to understand the volumes and the use of the volumes. So volumes inside the containers or the docker is basically part of the file system where docker will store the data and that location will be managed by the docker itself. A non docker service or non containerized service will not manage or modify the volume parts inside the containers, right? So volumes are basically stored in a part of the host file system. So in layman terms, we can say the volumes is a directory or the part of the host file system where container will persist the data, right? Volumes are basically created and managed by the containers only, right? As we have already discussed, a non container service will not manage and create the volumes. If user need then user can also create the volumes with the help of the volume command. So in the same lecture we will see how we can create the volumes if this is required, right? And when we create the volume it is stored within the directory on the docker host machine. So the volume is basically a directory or you can say the file system which will reside on your host machine and whenever you will creating the volumes with the help of the volume command as well that particular volume will be created on the host machine where the container is running. And as we have already discussed that volume is the solution of the persistent data problem. So whenever you will destroy your container volume will not be removed, right? So let's see how we can create the volume, how we can identify the volumes and what is the use of the volumes as well, right? For this first we will start with the container MySQL container, right? So first we'll pull the MySQL image, but before pulling the image we will go to the hub.docker.com and go through the docker file of the MySQL, right? So first we will go to the hub.docker.com then we will click on sign in button and sign in on our account, right? Once you will be in click on the search and search for the MySQL, right? So you can see we have a lot of MySQL images and this is the official one, right? Which have 10 million plus downloads. So I will click on the official image and over here we have different different versions available. So we will click on the 8.0 docker file version, right? And over here we can see we must have some kind of command like volume, right? Because this is the database and there should be some kind of command where we are persisting the data, right? And you can see we have the volume commands over here, right? So inside the docker file of MySQL it is defining the volume and volume is being defined inside the where live MySQL. This is the location. This is the physical location on your machine where this particular container will execute, right? So first we will pull the MySQL image, right? For this we will open the terminal and over here we will execute a command docker pull MySQL, right? So this will pull the latest image of the MySQL. So you can see it is basically downloading the MySQL image. So we have to wait until the complete image will be downloaded. And MySQL latest image is being downloaded, right? 
now suppose we want to inspect the mysql image so we will execute a command docker inspect mysql hit enter then you can see over here we must have some kind of command like volumes right you can see the volumes is being present over here which is defining the location where live mysql so basically when you will start your mysql container it will create the data volumes or the persistent data at this particular location on your machine right so first let's start the mysql container right so to start the mysql container we need to execute the command docker run hyphen d in the detach mode hyphen hyphen name suppose i will name my container mysql db then we need to pass the image name which is mysql but we know very well that to start the mysql we need to pass the environment variable right and how we can pass the environment variable inside the containers with the help of the hyphen e right and what should be the environment variable environment variable would be mysql allow empty password equals to true right hit enter and you can see the container is being started with this particular id right if i will execute docker ps then you can see a container named mysql db is running if i will inspect docker inspect mysql db then you can see it is specifying the complete details of your mysql container which is which have the volumes where live mysql and there should be some kind of another tag called mounts you can see over here right and mounts has the destination where live mysql but which have the source where live docker volumes then some random id then underscore data right so by default this container mysql db container is writing the data at this particular location if you want then you can go to this particular location like cd and paste it hit enter right put ls and you can see underscore data is here if i will go to this particular location underscore data again put ls then you can see over here we have some kind of files so it means by default mysql is running the data at this particular location which is where live docker volumes at and this particular random generated id and then particular data right i will go to the root right again execute docker ps right so we can see the mysql db is running now if you want to identify that how many volumes are being created then you can execute the command docker volume ls and you can see a single volume with this particular random id is being created and this is the same id right in the same way if i will again create another mysql container and name it mysql db2 right so i will execute the same command again and i will name it mysql db2 hit enter now you can see a new container is being started if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see two containers are running first is mysql db and second is mysql db2 if i will execute a command docker volume ls then you can see there are two volumes listed right it means the first volume is related to first container and second volume is related to second container but these are the randomly generated ids so at run time it would be difficult to identify that which volume is related to which container right now suppose i am going to stop my container so docker container stop mysql db mysql db 2 hit enter then we have to wait until the both containers got stopped i will execute a command docker ps then you can see nothing is running but if i will execute a command docker volume ls then you can see that both volumes are still exist it means the containers are being destroyed they are being stopped but the volume is still present it means the persistent data volume issue is resolved right 
although my containers is being stopped but my data is basically present right the data which is being generated with that particular container is not being destroyed so this is the way how you can resolve the persistent data problem right now now suppose you want to inspect any volume you want to inspect this particular volume so you can execute a command docker volume inspect and then define the id right so suppose i will copy this and paste it hit enter so by this way you can inspect this particular volume as well that this is being created at this particular time created by the driver local labels are null mount point is this and name is this right so we can inspect the volume as well now suppose we have a new requirement where we need to create the custom volume and we need to start the mysql with that particular volume so how we can do that for this we will enter the same command and inside this command before the image name i will define hyphen hyphen mount then source equals and over here i need to define my volume name suppose i am defining mysql hyphen db then put comma then put destination equals and define the destination where the volume will be created so my volume will be created inside the where lib mysql right hit enter button uh oh i'm getting the error because there was already a running container with the mysql db2 so i will rename my container and i will rename it mysql db3 right hit enter then you can see a container is being started if i will execute a command docker volume ls then you can see a new volume is being created with the custom name which is mysql db which i just defined over here right so with the previous approach we have the issue that we was not able to identify that which that which volume name was related to which container right but with the help of the custom volume name we would be able to identify that which volume is related to which container right if you will stop this container docker container stop mysql db3 then you can again start the same container with the same persistent volume right i will execute the docker volume ls then you can see the volume is still persist it means we can start a new container with that particular volume it means if a container is running that has inserted some data inside your volumes and somehow you have to stop that container and again you need to start a new container with the upgraded version then you can start the new container with the upgraded version with the existing database right so with the help of the volumes we can define the volume where the persistent data will be defined and we can start a new container with the existing data volumes right if you want i can show you that i will start a new container named mysql db4 right and that container will be start with the mysql db volume see the container is being started execute docker volume ls so although i have started a new container but the volume is still same a new volume is not being created right so i have started a new container with the existing data volume so this is the benefit of the volumes right this is the benefit of the volumes that we can start an existing container or we can start a new container with the existing volume as well right so this is all about the volumes if you have any doubt any question regarding the volumes and how we can create the volumes how we can identify the volumes then you can put your question inside the question and answer forum so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about the second resolution of the persistent data problem which is bind mounts so in the previous lecture we have discussed about the volumes and we have seen how we can create the volume how we can create the custom volumes and how we can map the running containers with the existing volumes today we will see what is the bind mounts and how we can create the bind mounts and how we can use the bind mounts so let's start with so first we will try to understand the bind mounts 
So team bind mounts means a file or a directory on the host machine which is mounted into a container. It means when we are saying we are using bind mounts inside the containers, then we are mounting the existing directory on the host machine with the directory which is present inside the container, right? So we are mapping the file of a host machine into a container file. So this is called bind mounts. We are mounting the container directory and the host machine directory together, right? This is quite different with the volumes. We will see what is the difference between the volumes and the bind mounts as well. Bind mounts may be stored anywhere on the host machine, right? Although the volumes also store on the host machine, right? This is the first difference between the bind mount and the host machine that non docker processes on the docker host machine can access the bind mounts and modify them. This is not possible with the volumes. If we are using the volumes, then non docker process cannot modify or access that particular volume inside the container. But if we are using the bind mount, we are mounting the directory on the host machine with the running directory inside the containers then any non docker process can access that particular directory and can change anything in that particular directory. But there is a benefit as well. If we are running in the development environment where we are building our project regularly, right? And we want that my container every time use some new code, right? So we can replace the jar every time inside the running container. We cannot change to we cannot need to start the container again and again, right? So by this way, we can change anything inside the running container as well, right? So with the help of the bind mounts, we can change anything inside the running container as well. But there's a limitation with the bind mount as well. Like volume can be used inside the Docker file because that is not a hard code location on the because that is not a hard code location on the host machine, right? But bind mounts cannot be used inside the Docker file. You cannot define the bind mounts inside the Docker file. But if you're using the docker file, you can use the volumes. So this is the difference between the bind mounts and the volumes. The advantage of the bind mounts over the volumes and the advantage of the volumes over the bind mounts, right? Now let's discuss some good use cases of the bind mounts as well. Sharing the configuration file from the host machine to the containers with the help of the bind mounts, we can share the configuration files from the host machine to the containers. Suppose we have a requirement that my containers need to modify some configuration on a host machine, right? So this is possible with the help of the bind mounts. And in some case we need to uh, upload some new configuration inside the container that is also possible with the help of the bind mounts, right? Sharing the source code or you can say the build artifacts between the development environment on the docker host and the container. So as we have discussed, suppose my container every time needs to access the new code the changes which developer are doing then we can mount the directory which is present on a host machine with the container right and container will always access that part and container will be allowed to access any data which is present inside that particular directory. So these are some good use cases of the bind mount as well, right? Now let's start nginx container with the bind mounts. So to start nginx container with the bind mount, we need to use the below commands, right? We need to execute a command like docker container run hyphen D for the detach mode hyphen hyphen name we can provide the container name and then we can use hyphen hyphen mount right then we need to define the type of the mount which is bind then comma source equal to dollar pwd it means use the current directory right if you want to you if you don't want to use the current directory you can define the hardcore directory over here and then we need to define the target right target means which directory inside the container will be mounted with this particular source directory and then you can define your image name, right? So let's go to hub.container.com and verify the docker file of the nginx, right? So we'll go to hub.docker.com login into account and once you will be logging into your account search for the nginx. So you can see here we have the official nginx image, right? I will click this and then I will click on the docker file. So we will verify the docker file of the nginx. So over here we have the from, we have the label and environment and run command, right? Once we will scroll down, we are getting run and expose and stop signal and CMD. We are not getting any kind of bind mount or volumes, right? So how we can start the nginx with the help of the bind mounts, right? So let's go to the terminal. So we are inside the root location, execute pwd. So we are at a root, right? 
suppose i will create a directory like mkdir docker bind right and go to docker bind right so you can see if i will execute pwd i'm inside the root and docker bind now suppose i want to start nginx right and i want to bind my current directory with the nginx working directory so i need to execute a command docker run docker container run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name and i will call it nginx bind right hyphen hyphen mount space type equals to bind comma source then equals to dollar bracket and inside the bracket define pwd it means current running directory right then define the target and suppose i want to define the target like app then you need to define the nginx which is image name hit enter uh oh there is a spelling mistake inside the target this is t a r g a t so you can see it is downloading the nginx image and container with this particular id is being started if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see the nginx is running right and the container name is nginx bind right let me clear out my console and i will execute docker inspect nginx bind right i will scroll a bit until i will find out the mount location and you can see over here we are getting the mount location and mount is destination is underscore app and source is root docker bind right so you can see if you will go to the running container so i will execute a command docker exec hyphen it nginx bind bash right and i will hit enter button so you can see i am right now i am so you can see right now i am inside the running container if i will enter ls then over here we have the directory app i will go to this directory cd app right put ls so there is nothing it means ls hyphen al so there is no file right this is total eight files but all are hidden now i will open another terminal so you can see right now i am working on the two terminals this terminal where i am present inside the container and this terminal where i am present inside my host machine so i will clear out the console and i will go to the directory docker bind right and suppose over here in this particular directory execute pwd so i am present inside the root docker bind this is the same directory which i have mounted inside the container and apps directory right suppose i will create some file over here so i will create a file like echo hi this is custom file and i will save it inside the test.txt hit enter put ls then you can see the test.txt is present inside my local file system now i will go to inside my containers and again put ls then you can see the test.txt is also present over here earlier this file was not present over here as soon as i have created that particular file test.txt in my local machine at a location which i have mounted with the container so same file is present inside the container as well right so by this way we can see we can change anything on a host file system and that thing will reflect inside the running container if i will create another file like touch anshul test dot txt hit enter and i will switch the terminal again execute the ls hyphen al then you can see this file is also being created inside the running container they over here we are present inside the container and over here we are present inside the local file system see so i am changing something inside my local file system and that change is being reflected inside the running container right so this is the benefit of the bind mounts you can change anything inside the mounted location and that will reflect inside the running container so you can see over here i am able to access the bind mount location in my local file system with a non dockerized process 
I'm using my terminal. This is not a dockerized process. So non-dockerized service can also access the bind mounts and modify the file system, right? So team, we have seen how we can use the bind mount, how we can uh, use the bind mounts with the container, how we can mount the local file system with the running container and how we can use them and what are the benefits and drawback of the bind mounts, right? We have already seen the volumes in the last lecture. So this is all about the data management of the containers, right? This is the way how we can manage the persistent data of the containers in a local file system or in the volumes, right? So thank you team. Thanks for your time. If you have any question regarding the volumes data management and the bind mounts, then you can put your question inside the question and answer forum and I will be happy to answer. Thank you team. Thanks for your time. Hello team. Welcome back. So in this section, we have learned about the data management. We have discussed about the volumes and bind mounts, right? So this is the time of the assignment. So I'm going to post an assignment for you so that you can practice the volumes in the data management, right? So let's start with. So this is the assignment for you over here. We need to upgrade the database with the volumes in a container, right? So what does it mean? It means we'll start a database with a specific volume. Then we will downgrade that particular database. Then start a new database with the existing volume, right? So here I'm listing the step by step task what you need to do, right? So first you need to create a MySQL container with some specific version with a specific volume name like MySQL DB, right? You can use anything, but uh, I will prefer to use MySQL DB as a volume name, right? Once the container will start, you need to verify that the container is started successfully, right? After then you need to connect with your database and create some data create some database, create some table, insert some data in that particular table in your MySQL database. After this, stop and remove the running container of the MySQL, right? Then start a new MySQL container with the upgraded version or the downgraded version, but with the existing volume, which we have used in the previous container. And after that, we need to verify that the data which we have created in the previous container is still persist in the database or not. So this is the assignment for you, right? So these are the simple steps in the previous lecture. We have already seen how we can use the bind mounts, how we can start the containers, how we can start the MySQL containers and all, right? I know this is not a straightforward, so you can Google around the container stuff, MySQL container stuff, and you can do it, right? If you're not able to find out the answer, I will post the answer in the next lecture. Thank you, team. Thanks for your time. Hello team. Welcome back. In the previous lecture, I have submitted an assignment for you. Today, I'm going to solve that particular assignment. So team, if you have already solved that particular assignment, then that's definitely great and you don't need to go through with this particular lecture. But if you have faced any kind of problem to solve that particular assignment, then this is the lecture for you, right? So you can get the reference from this particular lecture and you can try to resolve that particular assignment again, right? So let's start with. So in the assignment, our task was to create the MySQL container with the defined database. So in the assignment, our first task was to create the MySQL database container with the defined beta volume, right? So first we will create the MySQL container. Then we will create the MySQL container with the default data volume, right? So first we will create the MySQL container with the specific version with the volume named MySQL DB, right? So to get the version of MySQL, we need to go to the hub.docker.com. So we will go to hub.docker.com. Once you will land on this particular page, you need to sign in your account. I will click on sign in button so that I will log in into my account. And once you will be logged in, you need to search for the MySQL, right? MySQL, hit enter button. And very first image you will get is the MySQL official image. You can see over here, we are getting the tag official image, right? So we need to click this image to verify the versions of the MySQL. So the MySQL versions are available 8.0.15, 8.0 and 8 and latest. So these are the MySQL versions which is available on the hub.docker.com, right? So we need to start the MySQL database with any of this particular version. So suppose first I will start the MySQL with the version 8.0. So first I will start the MySQL container with the command like docker container run then provide the name of my container which should be MySQL test and define the MySQL which is your image name, 
right once you will start your mysql with the above command you will face some kind of issue you will face some kind of problem right because mysql will start with some kind of password or with no password so to resolve that particular problem we will start the mysql with the below listed command right so team the commands which i'm going to use in this particular lecture i'm i have listed all these commands in this particular uh, document and i will attach this particular document with the lecture so you don't need to worry about anything right so let's start with let's go to the terminal and start the mysql container right so we are on a terminal so before we start the mysql container let's execute a command docker ps hyphen a to verify that how many containers are running or exist on my machine right so docker ps hyphen a so you can see right now the mysql container is already running right so to start a new mysql container first i will stop this running container right so i will execute a command docker container stop and provide the id or the name right so the name is mysql db4 and suppose i am going to stop the nginx as well again execute mysql again execute docker ps hyphen a then you can see both of the containers are in the exited state right suppose i will remove these as well so docker container rm then provide the container name which is mysql db and nginx right so both of the containers are being removed as well if i will again execute docker ps a so i will not get anything so we have already cleaned up our docker space right i will clear out the console now what i need to do i need to start the mysql container which have the version 8.0 for this i will execute a command docker container run provide the name with the command name suppose i am providing the name like mysql hyphen test then provide the image name image name is mysql then put colon and provide the version which version you want to use suppose i want to use 8.0 so i have provided 8.0 over here hit enter button so first it will download the mysql 8.0 version on your machine right and after the download it is showing some error and error is database is initialized with the password option is not specified right so although we have seen these kind of thing in the previous lectures but i am but i am showing you everything from the scratch so that you can get it better right so we we need to specify either one of the password option either we need to provide the option mysql root password or we need to provide the option like mysql allow empty password or mysql random root password right so i will go with the first one right so that i would be able to know the password of my mysql database right so i will execute a command docker container run hyphen hyphen name mysql hyphen test then define the environment variable like hyphen e and define the mysql root password right so i will copy this and define it within the double quotes mysql root password equals to define anything like my password so this would be the password of my mysql database right then define the image name which is mysql colon 8.0 once you will execute this particular command this will start the container mysql container 8.0 image with this particular password right so in first attempt it will fail let's execute and see it is failed right and it is saying error response from the daemon conflict the container name so you have seen the same container name we have used earlier and in this and again we are using the same container name although the container was not started but it has created the reference entry so first we need to remove the mysql container mysql test or you can rename your container right so suppose i'm going to execute docker ps hyphen a so you can see here we have a container which is in the existed state and name is mysql test now we have two options either we can remove this particular container or i can rename my container which i'm starting right so i will remove this docker container rm and provide the container name mysql test right now again i will execute the start command of my mysql 8.0 which is docker container run name name would be mysql test hyphen e the environment variable 
and in the environment variable i'm passing the variable my sql root password and value is my password and my sql image 8.0 right hit enter then you can see it is printing all the logs you can see it is initializing the database and printing all the logs why the logs are being printed why this is being printed in the attach mode because i have not started the mysql container in the detach mode so that it is being printed in the attach mode right and over here you can see mysql init process done ready to start up right it means the mysql container is already being started and it is being started on a port double three zero six you can see over here right so this is the way how you can start the mysql container but this was not our task our task was to start the mysql container with the defined volume or user defined volume so first press ctrl c to stop this particular container so once you will press your ctrl c you will come out from your running container if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see the container is up three minutes ago right so first i need to stop this container and then i need to start the same container with the user defined volumes right so i will stop the container docker container stop mysql test right once it will stop i will remove the same container as well docker container remove rm mysql container mysql test right if i will execute a command docker container ps hyphen a then you can see nothing is being present over here right so we have exited and removed the mysql container 8.0 now what i need to do i need to start the mysql container with the user defined volumes right so first let's go through the slides so we have done this much of work we have started the mysql container remove the existing container and start again and we have verified that the mysql container was running right now we need to start the mysql container with the user defined volumes and this is the command to start the mysql container with the user defined volumes right the rest of the command would be same we will add a one more parameter hyphen hyphen mount source equal to mysql db this would be the name of the volume which is user defined and the target right the mysql db volume will be mapped with the library inside the container which is present inside the where live mysql right so let's execute this command and once we will start the mysql container with this particular volume we will verify the mysql container right and after that we will go to the mysql database and create the data so this is the task so let's go to the terminal so we'll execute the command docker container run hyphen hyphen name mysql test hyphen e mysql root password equal to password then the image name but before this i will provide hyphen hyphen mount right source equals to mysql db this would be the volume name comma target equals to where lib mysql why i am providing this particular location where lib mysql because this is the volume location which is present inside the mysql docker file if we will go to the hub.docker.com and i will click on the docker file link and we will search for the volume then you can see here is the volume and location is where live mysql so i'm providing the same location in my command right so the complete command is like docker container run hyphen hyphen name then providing the name which is mysql test hyphen e environment variable mysql root password and the password would be my password defining the volume source equal to mysql db this would be the volume name and target equals to where live mysql mysql 8.0 right hit enter button uh oh one more thing we need to start this container in the detach mode so i will define hyphen d as well right so i'm defining docker container run hyphen d and name right hit enter button so you can see a container with this particular id is being started if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see mysql container name mysql test is running right 
if we want to verify the volumes we can execute the command docker volume ls and we can see a new volume called mysql db is being created right if you want to verify you can inspect the running container by command docker inspect mysql test which is my container name hit enter then over here we are getting the complete details of the container and over here we can see the volume and the mount location right so you can see inside the environment we are getting the password value as well and mysql root password equals to my password right and here we are getting the mount locations right so the vol the type is volume volume name is mysql db the source location this is the location which is present inside the running container directory which is where live docker volumes mysql db underscore data where live docker volume mysql db underscore data is the location where the running container will store the data which you will create right if you want then you can go to this particular location i will copy this and go to this location clear out the console go to cd and paste this location which you have copied which is where live docker volume mysql db underscore data then you can see this location is present if i will put ls then you can see we have the files present at this particular location so it means the volume with name mysql db is successfully created right i will clear out the console and go to the root so clear cd root right now what i need to do we have started the mysql database in a container now we need to create a database and insert some data right for this first go to the slides and go through some commands so first we will go to the mysql database and create the data and for this we need to follow these steps first we will inspect the container and find out the ip of the running container right then we get the running port then we will install the mysql client package with the command apt get install mysql client and after this we will execute the command to log in mysql db and what is the command we need to execute the command would be like mysql hyphen u root hyphen p we need to define the password then hyphen h after this we need to define the host ip and then hyphen p after this we need to define the port the sample command is listed below in the red color right so this is the way how we can go inside the database on a running container right so let's go to the terminal and follow these steps one by one so to find out the ip first i will inspect the running container so docker inspect mysql test and we will verify the ip and port value right so let's search for the ip and port value so inside the network setting we can get the ip and ip is 172.17.0.2 right and the port on which the container is started the port is 3306 this is the default port on which the mysql is started right so the port is 3306 and ip is 172.17.0.2 right now we'll try to go inside the database right so we will execute a command mysql hyphen u root hyphen p define the password password is my password hyphen h define the ip which is 172.17.0.2 define hyphen p and define the port 3306 which is the default port of mysql hit enter and you can see i am getting the error because i have forgot to install the mysql client package right so first i will install the mysql client package right so i will clear out the console and execute the command apt get install mysql client hit enter then you can see it is downloading the mysql client port y to provide the permission it will take few seconds so we have to wait until the client will install and it's done clear out the console and execute the same command which we have executed earlier so we will execute the same command again mysql hyphen u then provide the username root hyphen p then define your password in my case the password is my password hyphen h define the ip of your host hyphen p define the port hit enter then you will enter into the mysql you can see right now i am inside the mysql 
So I have logged in inside my MySQL database of my running container over here We can do anything with the database, right? So suppose I'm going to create some data, right? So I have listed down all the commands on the slides so you can go through the slides first So first we will create a database with the command like create database and provide the database name Then we'll create the table in the database and table name could be persons Right, which have the four columns like person ID, last name, first name, address, and the city. And after this, we will insert the data in this particular table. Right, so we will insert two rows in this particular table. And after this, we will verify the database person table. Right, so these are the commands we need to execute on this particular database. Right, so first we will create the database with the command create database and database name, suppose test db. Right. Hit enter so you can see queries. Okay one row affected if you want you can show the databases like command show databases Then you can see over here We are getting all the database which is present inside the mysql db and our newly created database is also present over here Which is test db right now to insert the data inside my test db I need to switch to the test db first so I will use the command use then provide the DB name, which is test DB. Right? Semicolon, hit enter. Now you can see we have we got the message database change. Right now I'm using the database test DB. Right? Now to create the table, I need to insert the create table command inside my MySQL. Right? Now what we will do, we'll Insert the create table command on the terminal inside my mysql db and hit enter button, right? Then you can see query ok zero row affected it means the table is being created if we will execute a command show tables Then we can see a new table named person is being created over here, right? Now our task is to insert some data in this particular table, right? so we will copy the Insert into commands on my terminal So by this query we are inserting the data into a person table, right? So we have inserted a query like insert into persons the column names like person ID last name first name address and city And then we have defined the value of this particular columns hit enter button Then you can see query. Okay one row affected right now. We'll insert some more data into this particular table so we have inserting the second row the value 17 Michael Martin Cascade to Finland, right? Hit enter then query is affected now. We will commit our data Now we need to verify that the particular data is successfully inserted or not, right? So we need to insert a query like select a strict from Persons put semicolon hit enter then you can see we have the two rows in the person table the first where the ID is 14 and second the where the ID is 17 So the first last name is Birksen and second is Martin first is from the Norway and second is from the Finland, right? So we have inserted the data inside the mysql db and which mysql db is running inside the container Right now what we need to do we need to exit out from the mysql. So we will type exit semicolon hit enter so we are out from the mysql db right now clear out your console If you want to verify you can execute a command docker ps then you can see mysql container is running right now What I need to do I need to stop this container remove this container Start a new container with the upgraded version with the same volume, right? So we need to follow this step first We will stop and remove the running container of the mysql then we will start a new mysql container with the earlier data volume which we have created in the current container, right? And then we will go to the database and verify that the particular data which we have created in this particular container will exist or not, right? So let's go to the terminal to stop the container. I will execute docker container Stop mysql test Execute a command docker ps then you can see nothing is being coming. It means the container is being stopped, right? Now I will remove this container. So docker container rm mysql test Execute a command docker ps hyphen a 
then you can see nothing is being present it means the container is stopped and removed right so ideally if the volume concept is not present then the data which we have created with the container should be erased right but we have created that particular but we have started that particular container with the custom volume right so the data should be persist inside the volume either we will start a new container with the same existing data volume so we'll start a new container of the mysql right and we will start a container mysql 8.0.15 right the upgraded version of the mysql and i will name it anything else if you want you can keep it same name like mysql test or you can change it right so what i'm doing i'm starting the mysql upgraded version with the existing data volume mysql db c i'm using the existing data volume mysql db over here right which we have used in the previous mysql container hit enter then you can see a container with this particular id is being started if i will put docker ps then a container is running right so first i need to do i need to find out the container ip so docker inspect mysql test right the ip is same 172.17.0.2 right and the port is 3306 right now what i need to do to verify the data i need to log in into my mysql container right so i will execute the same command mysql hyphen u root hyphen p then define your password hyphen h define the host ip hyphen p then the port then hit enter button and you can see we have inserted inside the mysql db right so first we will verify how many database are being present over here so we will execute a command so databases semicolon hit enter then see test db is being present over here so why the test db is present over here although we have not created the test db in this particular container because we are using the existing data volume with the new container right we have upgraded the mysql but we are using the same database which we have used in the previous container so team this is the resolution of the persistent data problem we have stopped and removed the earlier container but the data which we have created with the previous container is still persist and we can use that particular data with the new containers right so by this way you can scale up your application with the existing data you can scale up your docker with the existing data if you will use this particular database use test db execute a command select a stick from person then you can see the data which we have created is also present right so this is the way how the data volumes are resolving the issue of the persistent data we can contain secure the data at a single place and scale up our container application again and again right so this is the complete solution of the assignment which i have posted in the earlier lecture right if you have any doubt any question regarding this particular uh, tutorial then you can put your question in the question and answer forum also i have listed all the commands which we have used in this particular lecture in the document and i will attach this particular document with this particular lecture so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back as we have already discussed about the bind mounts so today i'm going to post an assignment on the bind mounts so team i'm expecting you will resolve this particular assignment without any help so let's start with so in this particular assignment we are going to start an nginx container and we are going to start that nginx container with the bind mounts right when we are creating the bind mounts we will edit the index.html file in the local system or the mounted location on the host machine and we will see is that the same file changing on the running container or not right so this is the simple and shortest assignment on the bind mounts which you need to solve by yourself right if you are not able to solve this particular assignment then in the coming lecture you can find out the answer so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and in the previous lecture i have posted an assignment on the bind mount and in this lecture we are going to resolve that particular assignment right so assignment was we need to start the nginx with the bind mount location and we need to verify that if we are changing the index.html file or we are creating the new files at the mounted location 
that the same thing is being reflected inside the running container or not right so let's start with so first we will start in nginx with the mounted location right then we will see how we can change the files on the mounted location and we will verify that the same file is being changing on the running container or not right so let's go to the terminal so we are on the terminal first here we will verify is there any container running or not right so we will execute docker ps hyphen a then we can see an nginx container is running since last 28 minutes an nginx container is exited state 29 minutes ago what i will do i will stop the container right if you want then you can remove the containers as well so docker container rm provide the id which is for 456 and double one a execute a command docker ps hyphen a then you can say nothing is being present on my docker space right i will clear out my console now what we will do first we will identify the ip of my machine because i am running the docker on a cloud machine so i cannot access the container on the local host right so i will put if config right and over here we are getting the ip is 134.209.5.248 this is the ip of my machine i will save this ip at some location right now what i will do i will start the nginx container for this we will execute a command docker container run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name nginx test hyphen p expose the port 80 then image name which is nginx right so we can see a container is being started if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see a container is started seven minutes seven seconds ago right now what i need to do if you will go to this particular ip right copy this ip go to the browser paste this ip put colon 80 put slash and type index.html hit enter then you can see it is lending you on a particular page welcome to nginx right so this is the default nginx page if the nginx is running then you will land on this particular web page right if you will stop the container like docker container stop stop and the container name which is nginx test and i will refresh my browser refresh your browser then you can see this page is not accessible right if i will again start my container docker container start nginx test and refresh my web page then you can see page is again accessible it means this page is accessible once the container is running and page is not accessible the container is not running it means this file the index.html file is present inside the running container so we need to find out the location of this index.html file right so we will go to the terminal clear out the console and we will go to the running container so docker exec hyphen it define the container name bash so we have inserted inside the running container over here we will go to the directory user share nginx html right so this is the location user share nginx html inside your running container where all these files are present the index.html file and 15x.html file if we will access this particular file 15x.html paste it over here then you can see this file have some error content and error record and all right if you want you can verify the content of these files as well on your terminal see this is the content of this particular file 15x.html and get index.html this is the content of index.html file right clear out your console exit out your container exit then put docker ps and container is running now stop your container docker stop nginx right now we will remove the container docker container rm nginx test so we have stopped the container and we have removed the container 
now what we need to do we need to start the nginx container with the mounted location with bind mounts so first i will create a directory mkdir test nginx now i will go to this particular directory test nginx right exit enter command pwd so my current working directory is test nginx what i am going to do i am going to mount this particular directory test nginx with the user share nginx html directory inside my running container right for this we need to start a command docker container run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name provide the container name nginx hyphen bind i am providing this custom name like bind then provide hyphen p port 80 80 then we need to define the mount location right so hyphen hyphen mount type equals to bind comma source equals to double quotes dollar bracket pwd which means the current working directory right put comma then target equals to what is the location we want to mount we want to mount this location where the all files are present so i will copy this location and paste it inside the target right remove these double slash now provide the image name which is nginx hit enter so you can see the container is being started right if i will put ls over here then in this particular directory test nginx directory nothing is present right now i will open another terminal and inside this terminal i will execute a command docker ps right so we can see nginx bind is running nginx container name nginx bind is running so what i will do i will go inside this particular container so docker exec hyphen it nginx bind bash right now i will go to the location user share nginx html i will put ls then you can see inside this directory nothing is present right so when we was running the nginx container there was two files present at this particular location user share nginx html but as soon as i have mounted this particular location with my local file system which is present over here and which is blank so this location is also being blanked right now if i will go to the browser and refresh this particular page then nothing should be appear see see we are getting 404 nothing is being appeared nginx is running but there is no file present right nginx running but there is no file present now if you will again go to the terminal right and this is my local file system and over here suppose i will create a new file touch test index.html right put ls see test index.html is present on my local file system right now this is the location where i'm working inside the running container i will put ls then same file is being created over here as well right now suppose we will insert some data in this particular file so we will open the file in a vi mode right press i to insert and create some data over here so i have inserted some data the html data the title is sample nginx file then we have a heading my nginx file then some paragraph c i am using bind mount running container i will put escape colon wq to save this particular file right press ls then you can see the file is present over here and if you will go to the container and press ls the file is present over here as well now we will go to the browser and in the side the browser i will put slash and type my file name which is test index.html hit enter then you can see we are able to access that particular file inside the running container right so this is the benefit of the bind mounts with the help of the bind mounts you can change anything inside the running container you can change your development code inside the running container right and you can always start or execute your container with the updated data or updated code right 
so this is the answer of the assignment which we have posted in the last lecture if you have any question any doubt regarding the data management bind mounts volumes then you can put your question inside the question and answer forum so thank you team thanks for your time after this particular lecture i am going to close this particular section in the coming section we will learn about the docker compose so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we are starting a new section and in this particular section we will learn about the docker compose right so let's start with so first we will try to understand the docker compose so docker compose is basically used to execute multiple containers as a single service so in some previous lectures we have seen we have to execute the nginx we have to execute the tomcat the mysql php server and some other application right what if i need to execute multiple containers in a single service so what is the solution for that particular thing so docker compose is the solution if you want to establish the relationship between the multiple containers right so with the help of docker compose you can start and you can use the multiple containers as a single service so for example if user want to start the mysql with the tomcat container then user need to create the one yaml file right and docker compose will use this particular yaml file to start both of the container as a single service so docker compose is basically divided in two parts the first part is the yaml file which is the configuration file for the docker compose and second part is docker compose cli right so docker compose command line and docker compose yaml file is the combination which will be used to start the multiple containers as a single service so docker compose is basically three step process in the first step user need to define the application environment with the docker file so that it can be executable or reproducible anywhere right in the second step user need to define the services the containers and make an simple docker compose yaml file and with the help of this particular docker compose yaml file you can execute your container in isolation together and third you just need to start the docker compose yaml file with the help of a command docker compose up on the docker cli so this is a three step process when you want to execute that containers with the help of a docker compose we need to follow these steps now let's discuss how we can install the docker compose so the prerequisite to install the docker compose docker should be installed on your machine right so the very first we need to download the necessary files of the docker compose from the github you can use this particular command to download all the things which is related to the docker compose so right here you can see we are using version 1.23.2 of the docker compose so this will download all of your docker compose file inside the user local bin docker compose directory right after this we need to provide the executable permission to the binary files which we have downloaded inside the user local bin and docker compose so we need to execute this particular command and after this we just need to verify the docker compose version with the help of a command docker compose version right so let's see how we can install it so i am on my terminal and if i will enter a command docker version so you can see docker 18.09 version is running on my machine so we have already done the prerequisite docker is already running on my machine now i need to insert a command to download the docker compose files so i will paste my command over here so once you paste you can see it has downloaded all the files in this particular directory right which is user local bin docker compose if you want you can change this particular directory but i would like to prefer this directory as this is the default directory defined by the docker for the docker compose now if you want you can cd to this particular directory user local bin hit enter put ls and you can see docker compose and docker machine are already here right this docker compose have some binary files right so we will again go back to the root clear out the console now in the second command we need to provide the permission to this particular file location right so with my second command i will provide the permission to the docker compose binary so i have already provided the executable permission to the docker compose binary now what i need to do i just need to execute docker compose this is the docker compose command line command to execute any docker compose command right if you want to verify the version then type double dash version so you can see docker compose version 1.23.2 is installed on my machine 
right and this is the build number so this is the way how you can install the docker compose on your machine right in the coming lecture we will learn about the docker compose yaml file thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back let's discuss about the docker compose yaml file so we will see how we can create the yaml file what is the yaml file and how significant the yaml file for the docker compose so let's start with so docker compose yaml file is basically a formatted file for the docker compose which describes the solution for containers that how many containers need to be run in this particular docker compose as a single service it will also supports the networks you can define your own network you can define your network configuration and network setting for the docker containers and you can define your volumes right so we have discussed about the containers networks and volume docker compose yaml file is the combination of the containers services networks and volumes right so we will see how we can create the yaml file and with the help of the yaml file how we can start the containers as a single service but before this first we will discuss about the component level of the docker yaml file right and the first thing about the docker yaml file is yaml file can be version right it could be version 1 version 2 and version 3 today we are using yaml version 3 so in the very first line of your yaml file you need to define the version of your yaml file right now yaml file can be used with the docker compose command If you want to execute your Docker Compose YAML file, then you must need to use the Docker Compose command. And default name of the YAML file in the Docker Compose is Docker Compose YAML, right? If you are providing your custom name, then you can execute your Docker Compose file with the command like Docker Compose hyphen f, then provide your YAML file name. So let's go to the editor and try to understand the component level of the YAML file. So team over here, I have generated a sample YAML file which is template dot YAML. and in this particular template file i have defined different different labels so the very first label is about the version and we need to define the version the current version of the yaml which is running is version 3 right and this version is specific to the compose file syntax version right now after the version we need to define the services tag inside this services tag we need to define the different different services and these are the services which are basically the containers in the production right the container name which you want to execute right for that container if you want to specify a particular image then you can define the image if you want to execute a particular command inside that particular container then you can define the command over here and this command which will specify over here this could be the shell or anything and this command basically will replace the command cmd which is present inside the docker file of that container after then if you want to define the environment variables for your container then you can define with the help of the environment tag and you can define the volumes for your container with the help of the volume tags as well right and again you can define your another container right and specify the image commands volumes and anything whatever you want you can also define the volume at a compose level right this is optional and this is a mounted link path of your host machine to the containers and in the similar way we have discussed about the networks in a docker you can define the different different kind of networks over here so this is the template of your docker compose file in the coming lecture we will see how we can execute the multiple containers with the help of a docker compose file right so if you have any question any doubt then you can put your question in the question and answer form right so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we will see how we can execute the containers with the help of docker compose right so let's start with so in this lecture we will see how we can start the mysql and wordpress containers with the help of docker compose so team we are not going to create the docker file right we will start directly from the docker compose yaml file so first we will create the docker compose yaml file with the default name right so So I will show you the implementation of the Docker Compose YAML file, right? And I will explain each and every step. But I will mention over there. Once we will prepare the Docker Compose YAML file, we will save the file and run the file by a command Docker Compose up hyphen D, right? 
so docker compose is the cli command to start the docker compose up is used to start the docker compose yaml file and hyphen d to start the docker compose yaml in the detach mode right if you will not use the hyphen d then it will start your yaml file and start the containers on the attach mode on your terminal right once the container will started we will verify the containers on a host machine right after this we will try to access the wordpress on a browser and in last we will down the docker containers by docker compose and command would be docker compose down so this is the exercise we are going to execute in this particular lecture so first let's see how we can create the docker compose yaml file for this i will go to the visual studio code editor or you can go to any code editor which is available on your machine right and over here i will create a new file and call it docker dash compose dot yaml in this yaml file first i will define the version colon single quotes 3 right so this is the version of yaml file to put the comment you can put use hash and i will call it version of yaml file right after this we will define services we have seen the file template in the last lecture right and inside the service i will define my first service so suppose i will name my service like db then put colon after this i need to define the image right so i will use mysql 5.7 right this is your image name and this is your image version so i'm using mysql 5.7 after this i will define the volumes for the mysql image which could be defined like dash your volume name so i will name it db underscore data colon where lib mysql we have already discussed about the mysql volumes in the volumes lectures right now i will define another parameter restart and i will keep the value always right so what restart will done so first i am basically preparing this particular docker yaml file i will explain the use of each and every command or each and every line which i have mentioned over here right after the restart to define the environment variables i will define environment right and i will define the environment variables like password username and all so you can see i have defined four environment variables the first is mysql root password the value is my password then i have defined the database name mysql underscore database and the value is wordpress then i have defined the mysql user with the help of mysql underscore user variable and the value is wordpress user then i have the mysql underscore password this is the password of the database which is wordpress right so these are the environment variables which i have defined for my service db so you can see so now let's understand this docker file so first i have defined the version right then i have started the services and the first service name i have defined is the db right inside this service i defined the image and image is mysql 5.7 version then i defined the volumes and inside the volumes i have mounted where live mysql with the db underscore data then this is something new we have not discussed in the previous lecture restart always it means restart my container whenever the host machine will take the restart right it will also restart your container whenever the container will crash it will also restart your container whenever your container will be hanged right if anything wrong goes with your container then it will restart your container right and with the help of the environment i have defined the environment variables right root password database username password and all right now let's define the another service so suppose i am going to define the another service wordpress right now after the wordpress i will define another parameter depend on and i will make it depend on hyphen db db is my mysql db service so what i am doing over here i am making the wordpress container depend on the db container which is my mysql db container right then i will define image image is wordpress suppose latest 
then I define ports, right? So suppose I want to expose my WordPress container port 8080. So I will define 8080 colon 80, right? Then I will define restart colon always. Then I will define environment, right? And inside the environment, I will define few environment variables like WordPress DB host. So DB host is DB, right? This is the service and which will accessible over the port 3306. Why 3306? Because SQL, because my SQL container starts on a port 3306, right? After this, I have defined the WordPress DB user. So this is the same DB user which we have used over here, right? Then we need to define the DB password. Right, so password would be the password we have used over here and after this we need to go to the main file and define the volumes and volumes is db underscore data right this is the volume we have defined right you can see we have defined db underscore data over here so this is my file i will save this particular file right so this is my docker compose gml file which we have created to start the container MySQL and WordPress together, right? Now what I will do, I will go to the terminal and over here I will create a YAML file. So touch docker compose dot YAML, put ls. So you can see docker compose YAML file is being created over here. I will provide the executable permission to this particular file. So ch mode triple seven docker compose YAML, put ls hyphen LRT so you can see this file have all the permissions right now clear out your console and open the docker compose file in a VI mode press I button to go inside the insert mode copy the complete data which we have generated on the docker compose YAML and paste it over here right press escape colon WQ enter right if you want to see the content of the docker yaml file you can use cat docker compose yaml and you can see this is the content of the docker compose yaml file the same content we have generated on my visual studio code this is the one way another way is you can directly upload this particular file on your machine where you are executing your docker right if you are executing your docker on your local machine then you can simply use this particular file Right, you need to go to this particular location where you have saved your docker.yml file and execute the command docker composer up hyphen D. Right, that's all. Because we are using the docker on a cloud machine, so I have uploaded the file over here. Now I will execute a command docker dash compose up hyphen D. Hit enter. So you have to wait. So team we are getting an error and error is docker compose GML is invalid because top level entry repository service. Okay, there's a mistake uh, instead of the service. This should be services. So these are the mistakes sometimes we did because uh, there's a lot of things to remember, right? So this tag, this tag should be services. So I will keep it services, right? Go to insert mode by pressing the I key on keyboard and insert the services instead of the service now press escape colon wq and hit enter again execute the same command now again execute the same command docker compose up hyphen d so now we will clear out the console and again execute the docker compose up hyphen d hit enter so you can see it is starting the containers. So first it will download the container MySQL container 5.7. Then it is downloading the WordPress. So once the download will complete, it will start the container, right? So we have to wait until the complete process will be done. And you can see at end we are getting creating root db-1 done, root WordPress done, right? Now if you will clear out your console and you will execute a command docker ps to verify that the containers are running or not, then you can see three containers are running you can see wordpress latest and mysql 5.7 are running right so this is the way how we can basically start the containers with the help of docker compose right the main thing about the docker compose is the docker compose yaml file if you will again go to the 
docker compose yaml file contain content then you can see this is the content of the docker compose yaml file over where we are executing two containers the mysql and the wordpress now to verify the wordpress go to the browser so team if you are using the docker on your local machine then you need to put the local host like this colon 8080 slash wordpress and hit enter button wordpress default page should open on your machine right but as we are using the cloud machine so instead of the local host we need to put the ip of my machine right if you are using the cloud machine then you need to put your ip over here so this is the ip of my machine why i am putting port 8080 because this is the port i have exposed inside my docker yaml file hit enter then you can see it will open the wordpress initial page right if you want you can go with this particular page suppose i will go with the english and continue right over here if you want you can fill out this particular form right so suppose i am going to fill out the site title like devops cycle dot com username is devops right password suppose i will keep this password and copy it in my notepad plus plus now email i will put my email and install wordpress so what this will do this will install the wordpress on your machine so you can see username is this password is being chosen i will go to login enter my username and password hit on login button then you can see right now i am inside my wordpress setup right over here i can do anything so i am executing the wordpress in my container if i will go to the terminal and execute docker ps and execute a command docker wordpress latest or put the id of the docker this container the wordpress container or put the id of the wordpress container and type log if i will go to the terminal and type docker ps and suppose i will type a command docker log hyphen t and then put the id of my wordpress container right hit enter suppose i will put a command docker ps to identify all the containers and i will execute a command docker log then my wordpress container id control c control v hit enter uh, the command should be docker container log if i will execute a command docker ps then you can see all the containers are running suppose i want to see the logs of my wordpress container so i will execute the command docker container logs then the container id so i will put the container id over here hit enter so you can see over here i am getting all the logs of the container if i want to execute the logs if i want to execute the log in the running mode then i can use like docker container logs hyphen hyphen tail then the container id then i can use the command like docker container logs hyphen f then container id now see if i will put this some space in my log right and go to the browser and suppose i will minimize my browser to show you something right so i will oh, i will keep so now suppose if i will refresh this and go to the terminal then log will refresh over here see right if i will perform some operation over here like updates and go to the terminal then logs are being generated over here so by this we can see the wordpress application the complete application is running inside the container right so this is the beauty of the container applications right so team so team we have seen how we can execute the multiple containers as a service with the help of the docker compose right if you have any question any doubt regarding this lecture then please put your question in the question and answer forum and i will be happy to answer so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back welcome to the docker training and today we will see how we can create and docker compose yaml file and we can build an application from the scratch so to create the docker compose yaml file 
and to create the yaml file from a scratch we will go to our editor right so right here we are on our editor right over here i will create a new file and i will call it custom application dot yaml right hit enter now here we will start to create the file from a scratch so first we will define the version and version could be 3 right after the version we will start defining the services so i will define services right then i will define my first service so suppose as a first service i need to define some linux destro so i will call it destro right then i need to define image and i will define the image alpine right so alpine is the shortest image of the linux and if i not defining anything after the image then it will download the latest image of the alpine right then i will define the restart and i will define always then i will define container name container underscore name and suppose i'm defining custom alpine then i will define some entry point right and i'm defining something like tail hyphen f dev nothing now let's try to understand all the commands which we have mentioned in this particular yaml file right so my first command is the services right so every service which is present inside the services will start a new container when you will start docker compose up right so i will define the same line in a comment right so i have defined each entry in the services section will create the separate container when the docker compose is run right so my first service is destro right this is my image name so image would be download at runtime right now restart always what is this so as we have discussed in the previous lecture if the host machine will restart then the container will restart itself again right if the container is stopped due to some kind of corruption then it will restart itself if the container goes down due to any kind of reason then it will restart itself right so this is the benefit of restart always so i will define like this like directive is used to indicate that the container should always restart right now in the next line we have defined the container underscore name so if you are defining this particular thing container underscore name then this will replace the randomly generated container name inside the docker with this particular given name right so i will define the complete command here like directive is used to override the randomly generated container name and replace it with the name that is easier to remember and work with right now next is entry point so this is again the new thing which we have not seen in the previous lecture so first let's understand why we are defining entry point like tail hyphen f dev null so we are defining this command due to the functionality of the container so if nothing is running inside the container then container will exit itself right so we are defining tail hyphen f this is an ongoing command so this will not stop and container will not stop right so i will define the command over here right so the command is tail hyphen f is ongoing process so it will run indefinitely and prevent the container from a stopping right so default entry point is overridden to keep the container running so this is my first part so this is the first part of my custom application dot yaml file right i will save my file right now we will go to the terminal and inside the terminal i will execute a command docker ps to identify that how many containers are running so right now only one container is running which is nginx i will stop this container docker container stop right and provide the container name which is nginx bind right again execute the docker ps and you can see nothing is running right i will clear out my console over here i will create the file touch custom application dot yaml hit enter now if you will put ls hyphen lrt then you can see this file only have the read and write permission right 
this don't have the executable permission so first i will provide the executable permission to this file which is ch mode triple seven the file name right hit enter again put ls hyphen lrt then you can see this file have the executable permission as well right now i will open the file in the vi mode so custom application yaml right press i to come into the insert mode go to the file which we have created copy this file and paste it here now i will press the escape key colon wq if you want to show the content of the file then you can use custom cat then file name and you can see it is displaying the content of the file right clear out your console so team if you have the same question again that why we are uh, copy the file in the terminal because we are executing the docker on a cloud machine right this is a cloud machine this is not my local machine terminal right and i have created the file the yaml file in my local machine so that i copy the content from my local to my cloud machine if you are executing the docker in your local machine then definitely you can execute that particular file directly you just need to go to that particular directory where you have created that file in a terminal right and execute the command docker compose up right now you need to execute the command docker compose hyphen f define the file name which is custom application yaml up hyphen d hit enter then you can see it is downloading the alpine and you can see creating custom alpine done if you will put docker ps then you can see a new container of alpine is running and name is custom alpine which was given inside the custom application.yml file so this is the command docker compose hyphen f then your file name up hyphen d to start the yml file if the default name not is docker compose.yml right if you have your own custom name then you can start your yml file by this particular command right now let's stop this particular container so we need to execute a command docker compose hyphen f then your file name then down why we are executing hyphen f and file name because we are executing the docker compose with a custom file right hit enter so it will stop your container so you can see it is printing the message stopping custom alpine right so it will take few seconds to stop your container and display with the success message see the container is being stopped if you will press docker ps then nothing is running right now let's go to the yaml file again and add some more distro over there now let's go to the yaml file again and add some more services over there right now we will now we will add some more services so we have added one service now we are going to add another service suppose the next service which we want to add is a database and in the last lecture we have added the database mysql suppose this time we are adding a database of postgres so i will add another service like database so when i'm defining another service basically it means it's a new container for my docker compose right so this is the first container destro and database is the second container right over here first i will define the image and i will define the image postgres latest then suppose i'm defining the container name and i will define it postgres underscore db so we have already discussed about the property of the container name right and next we are defining the ports and suppose the port is 5432 colon 5432 why because postgres by default start on the port 5432 right and in the similar way suppose you want to define the volumes as well so we are defining the volumes like dash dash dump colon temp like this right so we have defined the another container which is database right and database of the postgres right now suppose i will copy this file again go to my terminal open the custom application yaml file right remove the old content go to the insert mode and paste this particular file 
so in this particular file we have added another container which is database right press escape colon wq to save my file if you want to see the content you can use cat then your file name hit enter then you can see it is defining the both of my containers right see clear out my console now i need to define the same command again docker compose hyphen f your file name up then hyphen d hit enter so first it will start the alpine right and next it will start the postgres so you can see it is downloading the postgres right and all done if you will put the command docker ps then you can see two containers are running the one is postgres db and first is custom alpine c right the two containers are running right and over here you can see the port as well we have defined this particular port right so this is the second container we have mentioned inside my docker yaml file suppose i again need to stop the container so we'll execute a command docker compose hyphen f then your file name then down right it will stop both of my containers so you can see it is stopping the container and once done it will exit out so you can see the both of the container is being stopped right now let's again go back to the yaml file and add another container in it so we will add another container over here and suppose we are adding the nginx container and we will name it web right image nginx if we are not defining anything then it will take the custom image restart true always uh oh we def we forgot to define the restart over here it's good practice to define the restart in your compose file right in the similar way i will define the container name right so we will define it nginx underscore web then suppose you know to define the ports you can define the ports as well and we are defining the port 8080 and listening the tcp port 80 so we have defined the image we have defined the restart container name and ports suppose we are defining the volumes as well and we are defining the volume like my site template and etc nginx config my site template will be append to this particular my site template right then again we need to define the environment variable and suppose first i am defining the nginx host and we are defining nginx host sample.com next we are defining the nginx tcp port which is 80 right now i will define the links with my previous containers so first container is the database right so i will call database db and second as the distro right now let's discuss all the commands we have mentioned over here so we have so we are aware of the image we are aware of the restart container name ports volumes environment this is new so what does it mean by the links so with the help of the links i'm linking my nginx container with the database postgres container and the distro which is alpine so if alpine or database will take the restart nginx will again take the restart right so this is the benefit of the links we are uh, making the containers like a fail safe if any one of the like if any of the container like destro database will take the restart then this container will also take the restart and then we are defining the database colon db so over here with this particular colon we are basically creating the alias of this database container right if we will ping the db from my nginx container then it will reach out to the database right so this is just an alias if you want you can remove it as well so by this way we have created three containers right the first is alpine second is the postgres and third is the web but till now we have not defined the database persistent data into a external volume see still we are not defining the database persistent data into the external volumes so we need to define the volumes and inside the volume suppose i'm creating the volume the name is data and i will call it external and suppose the value could be true so what does it mean 
external true external true is telling docker compose to use the pre existing external data volume right that's it now if you will run this particular yaml file right and if this particular data is not already present then this will show you the error right so let's copy this complete file go to your terminal can clear out your terminal and open the custom file again in the vi mode remove the existing content from it press i and press control v to paste your data over here right now press escape colon wq right if you want you can get the data with the help of command cat then your file name and you can see it is printing the complete file data see right i will clear out my console if i will execute a command docker volume ls then you can see we have the volumes like this random volume this another random volume is equal db and root db data we don't have the volume name data right if i will start my docker compose hyphen f custom file name then up then hyphen d hit enter so we are getting the error right so as i told you if the volume is not there then you will get the error so first we need to create the volume right so it is the error is creating network data root default with the default driver error the volume data declared as external but could not be found please create the volume manually docker volume create name equals to data i simply copy this command paste it here right execute the command docker volume ls and you can see a new volume named data is being created if i will start my docker compose now then i would be able to start my docker compose see all set if you will execute the docker ps then you are able to access it right see so this is the way how we can create the docker containers ecosystem with the help of the docker compose team if you have any doubt you have any question regarding this particular tutorial then please put your question in the question and answer forum and i will answer your questions right so thank you team thanks for your time this is the last lecture of the docker compose there is not so much to discuss about the docker compose docker compose is just to create the ecosystem of the multi containers and we have seen all the things about that particular thing if you still do you have any question you have anything any concern right then you can write me so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we will start a new section in this particular section onward we will learn about the docker swarm so till now we have discussed about the containers images docker from this section onward we will learn about the docker swarm right so we will see what is docker swarm we will see what is the application of the docker swarm and how we can use the docker swarm in our production life cycle so let's just start with so first we will go through some problem statements which will be resolved by the docker swarm so team we have also learned about the containers we have seen how we can use the containers to run our application in isolation how the containers are helpful and and how we can execute the multiple containers on a single machine right so now the question comes in why we need docker swarm what is swarm when we have already discussed about the containers and containers are resolving a lot of issues then what is the swarm why we need swarm so swarm is basically used to cluster your docker containers so why we need to cluster the docker containers so we have a few question and these question will help us to understand the need of swarm so this is the first problem statement how we can scale up the containers so team as we know that the things are moving internet very rapidly and in current time we have a lot of robust and lot of agile applications so the traffic to any application can divert any time suppose you are owning some e-commerce website like suppose you are owning amazon flipkart and snapdeal kind of website or you are owning the website like netflix amazon prime right and at run time you are going to launch a new sale you are going to launch a new web series so at that particular time you need a lot of resources available in your pool so the one possibility is you will put a lot of engineers and they will create the container at run time right and they will manage the load 
and the another mechanism is you can automate your infrastructure right you can scale up your containers dynamically as per the load so this is the first problem statement where docker swarm is going to help us the second thing is how you can manage your containers or you can recreate if they fails or crash so your container is working and suddenly it is stopped working right it crashes so how can you manage that particular container so this is the second statement where docker swarm is going to help us suppose you are running four containers in a production the first container is active container second one is the passive container and two other containers are the replication server right somehow your replication server goes down right now replication is not happening between your primary application and your secondary servers so in that case how your application will behave it may possible that your application will crash or your application will stop responding right so how we can manage these kind of situations how we can recreate the containers if they are crashing or they are fails so this is the second problem where docker swarm is going to help us and the third is how we can upgrade the services with zero downtime so you are executing and service in a container and these containers are running in the production so you want to upgrade your container suppose you are using tomcat 801 and you want to upgrade tomcat from tomcat 801 to 803 right but you don't want any downtime downtime means your application in the production will not be down for any single second right so how you can manage the upgrade of services with zero downtime this is the third problem statement where docker swarm is going to help us how you can manage the containers the number of containers on vms on docker engine right so how the infrastructure is going to identify okay that particular node have a lot of containers and to put more containers on the same node will be uh, problematic so how we can manage the containers on the vms and nodes this is the another problem where docker swarm is going to help us so let's move further and let's see what is the docker swarm and how we can use the docker swarm right so docker swarm is clustering and scheduling tool for the docker containers with the help of the docker swarm you can orchestrate or you can make the cluster of your docker containers with the help of the docker swarms we can schedule the task we can schedule the services right so let's move further and we will see how we can create the cluster of the containers how we can schedule the task how we can schedule the services and the another point is swarm is docker's native support right it is a native support of the docker this is not a third party tool or third party service which we are executing above the docker so swarm is the docker native support for the orchestration of the clusters and docker engine right when we are talking about the orchestration what is the orchestration so orchestration means define nodes and define services see how many nodes you want to run and where you are done right so orchestration means at runtime we will define the number of nodes and the number of services are running on this particular nodes and we will see that how many number of nodes are basically required at runtime and where these nodes will be deployed so this is called orchestration docker will help us to orchestrate the containers on the docker nodes at a high level we can say that docker swarm takes multiple docker engines running on different host machines and let us use them together so we can understand this particular thing with a simple example suppose we will take an example of the amazon.com and amazon.com has launched and amazon recently has launched a new service amazon prime right amazon prime is operational in multiple countries in suppose and many countries have a lot of population like india have a lot of population china have a lot of population us itself have a lot of population so we need to scale our services as per the requirement amazon is going to launch a new web series which is quite popular which is quite popular in India, which is quite popular in, in, in America, right? So the people, so the load which we are expecting on that particular servers when we will launch the web series is quite high. So in that case, on the peak load hours, Docker Swarm will help us to manage the Docker engines, manage the Docker containers, and it will decide on which host I need to up new containers and how we can manage them together, right? So at runtime, user is sending the traffic, but on which node that particular traffic will diverse it is the responsibility of the docker swarm docker swarm have two types of node the first node is called manager or master and second type of nodes are called worker every swarm starts with one manager node or we can say it's a leader node right the algorithm which swarm is using is called the raft algorithm right so docker swarm is highly available which is just because of the raft algorithm now we will see what is the raft algorithm so raft algorithm has been designed in a particular way that the leader node is constantly checking it with its follower nodes right 
and syncing their state with the follower nodes so in the raft algorithm we have one master node and we have n number of follower nodes right the master node is checking their state with the follower nodes in any case if the master node goes down then the one of the follower node will create as a master right we can understand this particular thing with a simple example so let's say we have three nodes like a b and c and a is the leader right one day in the network transaction the a goes offline and b and c are alone and b and c are not getting any call and not getting any traffic from the a right in that case with the help of the raft algorithm b and c will elect one of them as a master and one of them as a worker right so suppose b is picked as a master right now b is serving as a master c is serving as a worker a is offline after some time a comes online right but when a goes down it was a master now a is master b is master c is worker so what will be the state of a once it will come online so in that case a will identify okay b is the master in term 2 so a itself downgrade as a worker now b node will become a master and a and c will become a worker so this is called the raft algorithm where master and worker nodes uh, basically manage themselves and once the master goes down any of the worker node will come as a master and serve other node as a worker now let's discuss about few benefits of the docker swarm so the first benefit is the task scheduling so let's discuss how docker swarm will help us in the task scheduling so suppose we have n number of services so what we need to do we need to deploy our services as a stack in a swarm right so we will create a stack of services in a swarm and when you declare your services you provide the swarm with important information about how you actually want your service to be run this includes the parameter like how many replicas you want on each service how the replicas should be distributed when they should only be run on the certain nodes and more right so once the service is deployed now it's a job of a manager to ensure that the deployment requirement you set continue to met it means if anyhow the service goes down a new container will be spinned up so let's understand this with an example so let's say you have deployed an nginx service specify that there should be three replicas so it means if anyhow your deployment goes down it is the responsibility of the manager to spin up the new container with the same configuration right the second benefit or the second use of the docker swarm is load balancing so how docker swarm will help us in the load balancing so suppose your service is running and you are running 10 nginx servers right in these 10 nginx servers one is the master and rest nine are the workers now it is the responsibility of the docker swarm to maintain the traffic on all the nginx nodes right nine worker and one master node it doesn't mean that the master will not serve the traffic master will also serve the traffic but worker will actually serve the traffic master will manage these nine workers plus serve the traffic so load balancing is another feature of the docker swarm the next benefit of the docker swarm is rolling updates so if you are running as a devops engineer then many times you have seen that at runtime uh, we are executing 10 servers in a single application right and somehow some bugs found in the production and we need to patch our production and so in that case docker swarm will help us to patch the running containers in the docker swarm you can define okay two containers at the same time will be goes down and two new containers at the same time will spin up with the new patch that means if 10 containers are running on an application then two containers will be spinned up with the new functionality with the patch functionality and eight are still running with the old so here you can see there is no downtime application is still running there is user is not impacting right user is able to execute their work it's just the responsibility of the application and load balancer that where it is sending the traffic in the same way we can again down the two another containers and upgrade two new containers down two another containers and upgrade two new containers so this is called blue green upgrade and this is called the rolling upgrade or rolling update right where without any downtime we can upgrade the services this is also the functionality of the docker swap and last one is the security so team docker swarm comes with a great security features out of the box when a node joins the swarm it is used as a token and that token is encrypted which is basically decoded by the swarm itself right so it comes with a lot of security features as well so team this is about the swarm we have discussed what is the need of the swarm what is the swarm in coming lectures we will see how we can implement the swarm and how we can create the services in the swarm so thank you team thanks for your time
Hello team, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have discussed uh, a bit about the Docker Swarm. Today we will discuss about the Docker Swarm terminology. We will see uh, what is the meaning of different different terms in Docker Swarm, right? So let's start with. So first itself, we will learn about the Docker Swarm. So Docker Swarm is already an inbuilt functionality in the Docker toolkit, which can be used through the cluster management and orchestration of the Docker clusters, right? And the toolkit which is specific to the swarm is called swarm kit, right? A Docker swarm is the combination or you can say it consists of multiple Docker host, right? Which run in the swarm mode. When we are talking about the swarm mode, then it means some of the Docker's are running as a manager, which has the manager membership, right? And the delegation and some of them are running as a workers, right? Which we call the swarm services. So the Docker Swarm is basically the cluster management of multiple Docker host or you can say the multiple Docker clusters where a single cluster is running as a manager mode and rest of the clusters are running as a worker mode. Now first we will see what is the Docker host. When we are saying that Docker Swarm consists of multiple Docker host, then what is the meaning of host here, right? So host is a Docker container which can be a manager, which can be a worker or which can be performed both of the roles and host are used to execute the services. Docker Swarm is also used to maintain or you can say the schedule the services on the Docker clusters, right? For example, we can say we have the nine cluster of the Nginx, right? Out of nine, eight Nginx clusters are running as a worker and a single Nginx is running as a master. So what all the containers are doing, they are executing the service which called Nginx, right? And suppose at runtime, some of the worker becomes unavailable, right? then Docker Swarm will schedule that particular worker's task to some other nodes, right? So that it will not impact your traffic. It will not impact your application performance. So Docker Swarm is also used to maintain the service on the cluster or we can say it is also used to schedule the services on the clusters. So the next thing which we are going to discuss is task, right? In this particular section in the Docker Swarm, you will uh, listen this particular word multiple times. So task is a running container which is a part of the Docker Swarm service and managed by the Swarm manager, right? So in another word, we can say if a particular container is running a particular task, right? Your particular container is running the Tomcat, right? So Tomcat has a task which will be executed with the help of the container, right? And that task will be managed with the help of the Docker manager because the task is the part of the service. Now, next thing we are going to discuss about the nodes. So a node in the Docker Swarm is an instance of the Docker engine, which is just a participant in the Docker Swarm. So node is used to execute the service and a single service can have multiple tasks, right? So the plus point with the nodes is that you can execute multiple nodes on a single physical computer or a single cloud machine, right? And suppose you are working in the production, then you can distribute multiple nodes across the multiple physical machines or multiple cloud servers. And next thing we will discuss about the application deployment. So to deploy your application in a swarm, you submit a service definition to the manager node, right? So suppose you want to start some application in the swarm, then we need to submit the service definition. The service will execute that particular application. So we need to submit the particular definition of that service to the manager node and manager node dispatch the unit work called task to the worker nodes, right? So suppose we want to execute an application in a swarm mode, right? Then first we will define a service which have some parameters. We will submit that particular service to the manager node and then manager node will define the number of units or you can say the number of tasks to the workers to execute that particular service. Manager node also performs the orchestration and the cluster management functions, right? Which is required to maintain the desired states of the swarm. What does it mean the desired states of the swarm? It means if some surveys, some nodes are going down in between due to some crash, due to some issues, then swarm will manage them and it will spin up the new nodes and, and execute the service on the new nodes, right? Manage a node, elect the single leader and conduct the orchestration task as well. Now, what is the role of worker? So worker nodes receive and execute the task, which is basically assigned to these workers from a master. And when we are saying a particular service is basically prepared for the application. So service is the definition of a particular task to execute on the manager or the worker node, right? So we need to define the parameters. Okay, which task is need to define and the combination of the input parameter and the task itself is called a service. 
when we create the services we also need to specify which container image to use and which command to execute inside that particular container so suppose you want to execute the nginx and you want to execute the nginx on a port 8090 so nginx so the execution of the nginx is a task right and the combination of the commands as well this is a service so as a whole we are executing the nginx service and just nginx execution is a task now so as we have already discussed about the task so task is something which is carried out by the docker containers and command run inside the containers once a task is assigned to a particular node it cannot move to the another node this is the thumb rule in the swarm if a particular task is assigned to a particular node that particular task can only run on the assigned node or fail so earlier we have already discussed that the docker swarm can also be useful in the load balancing right so swarm manager uses the ingress load balancing to expose the service you want to make available to the external to the swarm world right what does it mean what is the mean of the ingress load balancing it means suppose you have an nginx server and there are the nine or ten uh, containers which are running in a swarm mode right out of these 10 containers nine containers should be worker and only one container should be master right all the traffic which we are putting on that particular nginx server that will be executed with the help of manager right and that manager or master will distribute these commands to the workers that distribution is called the ingress distribution right master will validate okay which node is serving the less traffic and which node is serving the more traffic and it will distribute the load accordingly right so team these are the words or these are the uh, things which we are going to use in this particular section like the task service node host swarm right so we we should be clear about these things right so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back and today we will see how we can create the services in docker swarm so let's start with so before creating the services in the docker swarm we will see how we can initialize the docker swarm on our machines right so let's go to the terminal and verify is docker swarm is initialized or we need to initialize it so right now we are on our terminal and first we will identify is there any container running so i will execute a command docker container ls hit enter then you can see no container is running over here now to identify the docker info i need to execute a command docker space info and the docker info command will display all the information about your docker engine so you can see we are getting the information right here we just have the one container which is in the stopped state right we have the six images the version which we are using is 18.09.2 then over here you are getting the swamp right and here is the swarm entry and which is showing inactive right so what we need to do on our docker machine first we need to initialize the docker swarm right to initialize the docker swarm we have a command docker swarm in it so let me clear out my console so to initialize the docker swarm we need to execute a command docker swarm in it in some case this command will execute successfully in some case it may fail so let's execute it and in our case the command is failing the command is failing because we are executing the docker engine on a cloud machine and this cloud machine is using two ips on eth0 right they have their own network layer so we need to specify the advertising address as well right if you are getting an error like this then you need to execute a command if config hyphen a right and it will show you the IP of your ETS 0, which is 143.209.5248. Right? This is the IP we can use. So we need to execute a command again docker swarm init hyphen hyphen advertise hyphen addr and then provide your IP. Hit enter button. So you can see the docker swarm is initialized in some case this command the docker swarm in it will work and you will get the output like this if you are getting the output we have got earlier right then you need to extend the command with this particular keyword and define your ip right so right now we can see the docker swarm is initialized and it is saying the current node is this 
which is a manager so we have initialized the manager over here on our docker host machine and over here we are getting the token as well right to add a worker to this farm run the following command so about this we will discuss later on right now we will see how we can use the manager and how we can create a service on the docker manager right so if you want to identify that what commands are available with the docker swarm then you can execute docker swarm hyphen hyphen help and it will list out all the commands which is basically available with the docker swarm so docker swarm has few commands available like ca display and rotate the root ca we will discuss about it in it we have already seen the use of init which is used to initialize the docker swarm then we have the join and join token we will discuss about these when we will create the docker cluster we have the leave command this is used to leave the docker swarm cluster right we have the lock and unlock key right we will also discuss about these commands and we have update we will discuss this command update in the same tutorial right so these are the commands which are available with the docker swarm now we are going to create a new service with the docker swarm right so we need to identify which commands are available with the services as well so i will clear out my console and i will execute a command docker service hyphen hyphen help this will list out all the commands which is available with the docker service so we have a command like create this command can be used to create the docker service then we have the inspect the same command we have the docker container as well this command is being used to inspect the services then we have the logs this command is used to identify the logs of that particular services we have already seen the use of log command with the docker container then we have the commands like ls to list out the services and ps ps is used to list out the task of a services or you can list out more than one services we have the rm to remove the services then we have the rollback to revert the changes in the service configuration we will discuss about this we have the scale command to scale one or multiple services then we have the update command right to update a particular services so these are the commands which are available with so these are the commands which are available with the docker service so so we have seen how we can initialize the docker swarm we have already discussed about the commands which is available with the docker swarm we have already discussed the commands which are available with the docker service now let's see how we can create the docker service and how we can list out the docker running services so let's go to the terminal suppose we want to create a service right and in that service we want to ping some website so suppose i want to ping uh, google.com so how we can ping the google we need to execute the ping then the url of the google.com so you can see by this command we can ping the google.com right now if you want to create a service which will ping the google.com so what we need to do so first we need to set up an os in that particular service right so let's see how we can create the service so i will clear out my console and i will execute a command docker service and we can use create command to create the service right and after this we need to define the image so suppose i want to use the alpine image of linux and what command i want to execute i want to execute a command ping www.google.com so what this will do this will create a service which will install the latest image of the alpine right and execute this command on that particular service with the help of a alpine let's hit enter and you can see you are getting the status so over here first we are getting some random id which is the id of the service then over here we are getting the progress as well right so overall progress is one out of one and verify service conversed and we are getting the verification status like service conversed right now if we will execute a command docker service ls this command is used to list out the services hit enter so you can see a service is running now this id is not a container id this is the id of the service which you have created right which you have created on the docker swarm and this is the name of service which is clever column right this is the mode which is replicated 
now over here we are getting something which is replicas what does it mean so over here we are getting two entries separated by a slash so the left hand side entry is showing how many replicas is running and right hand entry is showing how many replicas was configured right this is the image which is being used with this particular service right and this is the port where this service is running so right now we are not executing any web server or anything anything else we are just executing a single command on alpine which is ping so we are so it is not displaying any port right so over here we can see this particular service is running if you want to inspect this service you can execute a command docker service inspect and either you can define the service name or you can define the service id so i have defined the service name right so over here i am getting the complete json which is which will define the information so right here you can see the id is this the version is this index 11 created at this particular time updated at this particular time the name is this right the container specification so this is the container which is running so alpine is the image latest is the version and this is the id of the container which is running this particular service and the arguments is what are the arguments argument is ping and what we are paying we are pinging www.google.com right initialization false dns configuration zero resources are zero this is the restart policy so we don't have so we have any condition delays this in the milliseconds and these are the placements right so the os is linux architecture amd64 over here we are getting the os information as well and we are getting some other information as well like rollback configuration what is the and we are getting other information as well like what is the replicated mode how many replicas are running what is the update configuration what is the rollback configuration and what are the endpoints right so this is the way how you can inspect the services let me clear out my console now suppose you want to see which container is actually executing your service on a docker machine right so we just started the service we didn't define the container for this first you need to identify the docker service name so we can execute a command docker service ls to identify the name now you need to execute docker service ps either you can define the id or the name of your service right now you can see it is showing that this is the id of your container this is the name of the container right which is clever underscore column dot one this is the image which is executing the node is this the state is this and current state is running since four minutes ago so this container is running your service if you want you can specify this as well like, like docker container inspect and define your container id or name so this is my container id clever column one then this is the id right hit enter so you can see it is showing the complete information of your container right so we just started the service right that service started the container where a particular task is running and what is the task task is ping www.google.com i hope right now you are able to relate the things right so with the help of the docker swarm we have started the service that service has started the container and that container is running a specific task so we have seen how we can start the docker services right we have seen we have already discussed how we can identify the running container for a service right now we will see how we can scale up the services right so to scale up the services we need to execute a command docker service update then we need to define the service name then we need to define the replicas how many replicas we want to create right so let's go to the terminal again clear out my console execute a command docker service ls so right now you can see we are just executing a single replica now suppose i want to update this service and i want to create more replicas i want to execute four replicas of this particular service so i for so for this we need to execute a command docker service update then i need to define the service name which is clever column then i need to define hyphen hyphen replica replicas then i need to define the number of replicas suppose i want to execute four replicas of this particular service hit enter 
then over here you can see it is showing you the execution order as well right so you can see the four services has been created now if you will execute a command docker service ls then you can see only single service is running the name is clever kalam and this particular service is running in the four replicas it means the four containers are running which actually executing this particular service if you will execute a command docker service ps then define the service name hit enter then you can see the four containers are running see the first container was started 7 minutes ago now three new containers are started 42 seconds ago so this is the way how you can scale up the services without impacting the existing running service how you can scale up the running containers without impacting the existing running container right so right here you can see if you want to uh, create more containers which will execute the same service then with this particular way we can define the more containers right so we just need to update the service and that service the orchestration system will automatically will automatically create the new services will automatically create the new replicas of that particular services on another containers right now suppose i am going to stop some container so let's clear out the console and again execute the same command docker service ps then service name so over here we are getting the containers name the first container is container uh, clever clam 1 clever clam 2 clever clam 3 and 4 suppose now i am going to stop some container so docker container rm hyphen f then i need to define the container name so suppose i am going to stop the container 3 right hit enter now again execute the command docker service ls so you can see still the four services are running but if i will again execute the docker service ps and then the service name so you can see right here i will get the five containers see the clever 3 is basically stopped see we are getting the shutdown over here if i will again execute the command docker container rm and shut down the third container and execute the ls again then we can see it will stop the container hit ls see only 3 are running out of 4 but if i will again execute the same command then it will show 4 are running so it means the orchestration system is basically managing the service configuration by default in the configuration there was four replicas but actually at run time if any of the container goes down due to any corruption or due to any error then it will automatically start the new container it will automatically start the service replica right so this is the beauty of the docker swarm this is the way how the production will work because in the production you can't afford the downtime right so you just need to start the service in the production and docker orchestration system will automatically handle the complete configuration or the complete uh, orchestration of your docker service so team uh, this is the first uh, hands on lecture on the docker swarm in the coming lectures we will learn more about the docker swarm and we will see how we can create the clusters how we can auto scale the services how we can uh, define the blue green approach right how we can rolling upgrade the services and all so that's all for the day so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back in the previous lecture we have discussed how we can create the docker services on docker swarm today we will see how we can create the docker swarm cluster so in this lecture we will spin more than one nodes and we will join these nodes in a docker swarm and we will see how docker swarm is distributing the services on the docker nodes so let's start with so we are going to create the docker swarm cluster when we are talking about the docker swarm cluster it means we will create the new docker nodes and we will create the docker swarm service on single node which is called master and then we will attach and then we will attach the other nodes to the master right for this we have few options either we can do it with the play with docker.com right so if you will go to the internet go to your browser and type play with docker so you will get a link play with docker.com you need to click this link right 
and over here you are getting the sign in option so to work with the playwithdocker.com you need to log in right so it will so it will open this particular window right if you already have an account on this website then you can directly log in either you can create an account by click on this particular link right so playwithdocker.com is a website which will provide you the runtime docker machines on demand right but there is a drawback of this particular website that the docker which you will create on this particular website they will be available only for 4 hours after 4 hours the machines or the docker which you have created on this particular website will be automatically destroyed so if you just want to practice the docker swarm then you can use this particular website right on this particular website you can create the docker nodes on demand in this section we are not going to use this because we are learning the docker swarm from the production point of view so we will spin up the new machines on the cloud as we spin the deployments in the cloud and then we will set up the docker cluster and then we will set up the docker swarm cluster on the cloud machines right so this is the first option play with docker.com is the first option if you just want to hands on on the docker swarm and you want to create the own demand docker nodes and this is a free service right so you don't need to pay any single penny for your use the second option to create the docker swarm cluster on your machine that you need to create the docker machine that you can use the docker machine plus virtual box right so you need to download the virtual box and you need to create the three docker nodes on the virtual box on your local machine and then you can practice your docker swarm cluster right the fourth option is you can use the digital ocean you can create the droplets on the digital ocean which is a, a cloud machines right then you need to install the docker on these droplets and then you can use these droplets to create the docker swarm cluster and the next option is you can roll out the deployments or the virtual machine on the aws google microsoft azure and do right so you can spin up your own cloud machine on any cloud where you have the account and then you can practice the docker swarm so in this particular lecture we are going to use the digital ocean on the digital ocean we will create the cloud vms on demand and then we will install the docker on these vms and then we will see how we can set up the multi node cluster in docker right for this first we will go to the digital ocean and spin up new cloud machines so to go to the digital ocean you need to open the digital ocean and you need to sign in on your account so i have already signed in in my account to create the new virtual machines you need to click on this particular create button and click on the droplets in the droplets i need to choose the distribution so i am choosing the distribution 18.04.2 64 bit operating system the standard starter and i'm choosing the lower plan right i'm i'm choosing the $5 plan right i will choose the data center in san francisco i don't want any private networking i don't want ipv6 user data monitoring i don't need anything and what i want i want to spin up three droplets right so i have plus three times and click on the create button so this will spin up new cloud machines new three cloud machines in few seconds right so you can see the processing is being done over here and as soon as the machine will be ready they will move in the running state right so you can see still it is creating the droplets it will take another few seconds now you can see these two machines are being created and the third machine is still in the progress and all three machines are being created so now you can see our all three machines are ready now the question is how we can access these machines right for this i need to copy the ip suppose i am going to access the second machine right so i will copy the ip go to the terminal and type ssh root at the rate then paste my ip so i want to ssh my machine with the root user right it will ask you to enter the password right so as we have already discussed in the previous lectures you will get the droplet password on your email so if i will open my email so right here you can see i have the password of my second machine i will copy this password go to the droplet and paste it here then it will ask you to change the password of root and it is asking for the current password so i will again paste my current password then i will enter my new password right reconfirm my password and you are all set so right now you can see you are inside the cloud machine with the same approach we will reset the password of other two nodes right so i will so we have reset the password of all three nodes now what we need to do we need to install the docker on 
these nodes right so right now you can see i'm logging on the node one if i will type host name then you can see right now i am logging inside the node one now how we can install the docker on this machine so in the same course in lecture 12 we have posted all the commands which is used to install the docker on your linux machine right so here are the commands so what i need to do i need to copy these commands one by one and paste it on my terminal so i will copy the first command and paste on my terminal as soon as this will complete i will paste the second command so you can see the first is completed i will copy the second command and paste it as well hit enter type y for the confirmation so you can see right now it is processing and the process is done now i will clear out the console copy the third command and paste it again so please make sure we are pasting the commands in a sequence i will attach the all these commands with the current tutorial as well so that you guys can get it easily now copy the fourth command and paste it so right now it is installing the docker on your machine right it will take few seconds and done now i will copy the fifth command paste it here it will take few seconds and it's done copy the next command to install docker ce version and hit enter it will ask for the confirmation i will provide yes and right now it's downloading and installing the docker on your cloud machine so it will take few seconds you have to wait until the complete process will be done and as soon as this will done you can execute the command docker version to specify the docker version installed on your machine so you can see 18.09.3 is installed on my machine right to add the user i will execute this command sudo user mode hyphen ag docker root to use now after this i want to install the docker machine as well so i need to execute these two commands right so i will copy this and install it and paste it so it will install the docker machine on your node you can check the docker machine version by the new command docker machine hyphen version so you can see the docker machine version 0.14 is installed on your machine if you want you can install the docker compose as well so i will copy this command and paste it here to install the docker compose and it will install the docker compose as well now i will provide the executable permission to docker compose and if you want to check the version you can execute this command as well so by these commands you can see the docker compose version 1.22.0 is installed on this machine so these commands we need to execute on each droplet we have created right so we have set up the node machine 1 in the similar way we will set up the node machine 2 and node machine 3 right so now we have set up the docker on all three nodes right so these are the four terminals right so this is my main node if i will type docker version so we are working on version 18.09.2 this is the node on which we was working in this particular tutorial right and these are the three new nodes which we have spent just before right if we will type docker version on each of these then we can see here we have the version which is 18.09.3 which is higher release of my current node and if i will type docker version then this may also have 18.09.3 i will type docker version over here then this may also have the 18.09.03 c right i will clear out the console and i will and i will check if docker swarm is already configured or not so i will type docker info so this will provide me the information and it is showing swarm active right if i will type the same here docker info then you can see swarm should be inactive on this particular node because by default swarm is not active on any node right if i will type the docker info on the second node then this will also inactive over here see swarm is inactive and same should be the case of the third node see the swarm is inactive now what we need to do we need to initialize the swarm on all of the nodes right to initialize the swarm we need to type command docker swarm init and it is showing some error as we know 
we have seen this error in the last tutorial i will again initialize it with the extended command docker swarm init hyphen hyphen advertise addr control c control v then provide the ip and this is the ip of this particular node right and you can see the swarm is initialized right we will execute the same command on my other nodes so right here you can see the swarm is initialized on all three nodes right now if we want to see the commands which we can execute on the docker swarm then we can execute a command like docker node hyphen hyphen help right so these are the commands we can execute with the docker node like demote which will demote the node as a manager then we have the second command inspect which we can use to inspect the docker node then ls to list out the nodes then we have the promote to promote the docker node as a manager then we have the ps right to identify all the running nodes to list out the task which is running on the node then we have the rm to remove the node from a swarm and then we have the update right so these are the commands we can execute with the docker swarm on nodes I will clear out the console again on each of my node and now we will see how we can execute the commands on docker nodes right so we have seen what commands are eligible for the docker nodes now we will see how we can create the four node docker swarm cluster so right now we have already four nodes right the four cloud machine on which the docker is completely set up so what we need to do right now we just need to add these nodes in the docker swarm and how we can do that and we can do that with the help of the manager token so as you remember when we have initialized the swarm so it has displayed and joined token right so this is the token which has been displayed right now to add the nodes in the docker swarm we need to find out this particular token for the manager right so the node which we want to create the manager we need to find out that particular token right so how we can find out that particular token you need to execute the command docker swarm join token manager hit enter so if we want to promote this particular node the node one as a manager then we can get that particular token by this command docker swarm join hyphen token manager so right here what we want to achieve we want to achieve that my node one will be act as a manager and all three nodes will act as a worker so we need to copy this particular token which we have generated right and paste it on all the nodes so as soon as you will execute this command this will display you an output this node joined as a swarm as a manager right so if i will go to my first node and execute a command docker node ls right so this will display you the two nodes see this is displaying me the two nodes and the manager status is leader and reachable so which is the leader leader is my first node from which i have basically copied that particular token and this is the second node where i have executed that token and this is stated as a reachable now the same thing we need to execute on the second two nodes so i will copy this again and paste it on my second node sometimes you will get this particular message docker swarm that error from the domain this node is already part of the swarm this is the error which is basically introduced on the latest release why because we have initialized the swarm on this particular node as well so to exit this particular node from the swarm you need to execute a command docker swarm leave hyphen f right so node left from the swarm again copy the command and hit enter so this node will also join the swarm right again execute the same command for the third node and you will get the same message now again if i will execute the docker node ls then i will see there are four nodes see this is the leader and all three nodes are the reachable which are which will work as a worker and over here we are also getting the version of the docker engine which is installed on my worker nodes and on my master node so this is the way how we can create the docker swarm cluster right so we have initiated the swarm on manager 
and then we generated the token and pasted that particular token on the worker nodes clear out the console of each of node now if i will go to my worker nodes and execute a command docker container ls so no container is running on my worker nodes now what i am going to do i am going to create a service on my master node on my leader node so what is the command to create the service the command is docker service right create then i need to define the service image name suppose i am going to create the alpine and the command what i want to execute is ping www.google.com this is the same service we have created in a previous lecture i want to modify a bit i want to add let me make it bigger font now suppose what we want to do we need to create the replicas of this particular service as well so after the create i will define hyphen hyphen replica replicas and define the number of replicas you want to create suppose we are creating eight replicas of this particular service hit enter button so it will start eight services see so it will start eight replicas of this particular service once the service will be once the service will done you will get the message like this verify service converged right if you will execute a command docker service ls then you can see the service is running on the eight replicas if you will execute the command docker service ps and define the service name which is component glued washer hit enter button so this will display that which container is running on which machine so over here you can see the service one container is running on machine 3 service 2 container is running on machine 1 another container 3 is running on machine 1 another container is 4 which is running on machine 2 another container 5 which is running on machine 3 another container 6 which is running on machine 1 another container 7 which is running on machine 1 again and another container 8 which is running on machine 2 right if we will go to the nodes directly and we will execute a command docker container ls on the nodes then you can see on my first node two containers are running on my second node docker container ls two containers are running on my third node docker container ls the two containers are running see so docker swarm has already distributed the service task on different different nodes right if i will execute the same command on my master node docker container ls then you can see this is also executing the two containers right so we have eight task right and every task is basically executing in a separate container right and Docker Swarm has already distributed these tasks across the workers and managers. So we have seen how we can create the Docker Swarm cluster and how Docker Swarm is basically distributing the task across the master and workers. So this is all for the day. In the coming lectures, we will learn few interesting things, right? So thank you, Dame. Thanks for your time. Hello, team. Welcome back. And welcome to the new section of docker swap in this particular section we will discuss about the docker swarm basic features and application right so first we will start with the docker swarm networks so today we will discuss about the networks what networks are basically allowed in the docker swarm and how they works so let's start with so when we are talking about the docker swarm networks so docker swarm works with the completely new network which is called overlay network right so overlay is a driver which is used to set up the networking for the docker swarms right the overlay network driver creates the distributed network among multiple docker hosts it means when we are setting up a docker cluster then we are basically setting up the multiple docker host in a docker swarm so in that case overlay network will create a network system which will distribute the network on all the hosts which are connected with the docker swarm the overlay network is only used for the container communication right the containers which are running on a cluster one if they want to communicate with the containers which is running on the cluster two then they will use the overlay network right the containers which are running on cluster three if they want to 
communicate with the containers which are running on the master node right then they will communicate with the help of the overlay network but there's a limitation with the overlay network as well that overlay network will work on a single swarm right if you have a multiple swarms then you need to define the multiple overlay networks so we have seen that uh, we have initialized the docker swarm we have uh, added the nodes in the docker swarm so when we are initializing the docker swarm or a docker host is joining the existing swarm then two new networks are created on that particular docker host right the first network is the ingress ingress is a by default created overlay network with the docker swarm when you are basically initializing the docker swarm a default overlay network ingress is created on that particular docker host which handles the control and data traffic related to the swarm services so all the services which is running on the single docker swarm will communicate with the help of the ingress overlay network ingress overlay network will work only if you are not attaching the service with the user defined overlay network right if you are not defining any user defined overlay network then definitely the ingress will be the overlay network which will attach to that particular service and which will be responsible for the complete data flow control on the docker swarms as we have discussed if we are not defining any user defined overlay network then ingress is the default network which will connect with the docker swarm service the second network is called the bridge network so bridge network is basically called docker underscore gw bridge when you are defined when you are initializing the swarm this is the second network which is created by default on your master node or on your leader node right which connects the individual docker nodes to the swarm node right so ingress is basically responsible for the communication of the containers between the docker swarm right and the bridge network is basically responsible for the communication of the node to node right how the worker node will communicate with the master node how the worker node will communicate with the manager node or all communication which is happening between node to node the bridge network will responsible for that particular traffic right and all the communication which is happening inside the service inside the containers across the swarm the ingress or the overlay network will responsible for that particular traffic right there are some rules when we are defining the overlay network the first rule is few ports needs to be empty on the docker host machine right need the following ports open for the traffic to and from each docker host participating in the overlay network tcp port 2377 for the cluster management communication tcp and udp port 7946 for the communication among the nodes and udp port 4789 for the overlay network traffic these three ports should be available on the docker host machine if we are creating the user defined overlay network the second condition is before creating any overlay network docker swarm must be initialized on the node or join an existing swarm right so these are the two primary condition when we are defining the user defined overlay network right now let's see how we can create the user defined overlay network for this you need to execute the command docker network create hyphen d or you can define hyphen hyphen driver overlay then you can define your custom network name so let's go to the terminal and first let's see is docker swarm initialized on it or not so i will execute a command docker info this is my first node on which we have initialized the docker swarm so definitely the docker swarm should be active on this particular node and over here you can see the docker swarm is already activated on this particular node i will clear out my console and i need to verify is default overlay network and default bridge network exist on this particular node or not right for this i can execute a command docker network ls it means i want to list out all the networks which is running or available on this particular host machine so over here you can see here we have the ingress c and the driver is overlay and scope is swarm so if we are not defining any overlay network any user defined overlay network the ingress network created by default and here is the second network docker underscore gw bridge which is created by default right now let's see how we can create the user defined overlay network for this we need to enter a command docker network create 
hyphen d define the driver and define the network name my underscore overlay right hit enter uh oh there's a mistake i need to define hyphen d not hyphen f hit enter you can see a network is being created by this particular id if i will execute docker network ls again then i can see a new overlay network named my underscore overlay is being created the scope is swap right now to uh, discuss the use of overlay network let's create few services on our docker host machine right so suppose first we are creating a database service then we will create a web service like drupal right and the both of the service will create on the user defined overlay network then let's see what is happening inside the docker swap so let's clear out the console and suppose first i'm going to create the service uh, the postgres database service so docker swam docker service create hyphen hyphen name and i will name it postgres define the network hyphen hyphen network network is my overlay define the environment variable password so postgres underscore password equals to my password then define the image name so postgres right hit enter so this will create the postgres service so right now you can see it is preparing the service once it will done it will show you the completion message so it is verifying the task is stable and service created if i will execute docker service ls then i can see a postgres service is being created right now suppose uh, we are creating another service a uh, drupal service which is a web service and which will use this particular database as a db so i will create another service like create like docker service create hyphen hyphen name call it my drupal hyphen hyphen network which will use the same network my overlay suppose i'm defining the port the host port is 80 and access port is also 80 right and drupal hit enter so drupal is the image name so right now you can see it is basically uh, preparing the service once it will done it will show you the confirmation message so we have to wait until the complete process will done so right here you can see uh, we are not getting that the image is being downloading and the server is being created no just we are getting the service status if i will execute a command docker service ls then we can see the my drupal and postgres service are running right if we will ps these services so suppose i am executing the docker service ps and first i want to identify that where my postgres is running so my postgres is running on my node 3 right which we have created in the last tutorial right and in the similar way suppose i want to identify where my drupal is running so my drupal is running on port on node 1 c so the both of the services are running on the separate nodes right db is running on node 3 and drupal is running on node 1 right now let's go to the browser copy the ip of my first node and paste it over here hit enter then you can see it is opening your drupal service so when you will hit the ip you will land on this particular web page why we don't need to append any port with the ip because we have started the traffic on port 80 and by default if we are not providing any port then it will take the 80 as a default right now to continue we need to click the save and continue button and over here we need to choose the installation profile so suppose we are going with the standard and this will land you on this particular web page where we need to set up the database so as we have already configured and started the service of the postgres sql so i will copy this in the database name you can enter anything i am going to enter postgres right 
by default if you are not providing the postgres username then the postgres user is postgres itself right then over here you need to define the password which you have supplied inside your service so we have supplied the password my pass so i will define the my pass over here click on the advanced options and here instead of the local host remove this local host and provide your service name your database service name so copy your database service name and provide it over here right click save and continue button so this will land you on the install site page right so right now it is installing the drupal on your containers so we have to wait until the complete installation will done it will take very less time uh, mostly 20 to 25 seconds so let's wait now you can see it is asking for the site information so we will provide some information right and once you will fill this particular form click on save and continue so right now this will land you on the welcome page right so let's wait and we are on the welcome page right my site is www.testme.com right here i am getting the complete configuration with the help of this configuration i can manage my site on the drupal right so over here we was accessing one node right let's go to the digital ocean and copy any ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of server 3 right and paste it over here so you can see this will land you on the same page now let's copy another ip i'm copying the ip of server 2 right i will paste it here and remove the first one then this will open the same page again right if i will uh, copy the another ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of my node 1 which was the master node and paste it here then this will again open the same site right so you can see either the drupal container is running on single node but i am able to access that service from all the nodes which are running inside the docker swarm cluster right so what is this we will discuss these things in the coming tutorial today we have seen how we can create the surveys on the overlay network in docker swarm so thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back in the last lecture we have seen how we can create the multi-node cluster and how we can start up a service on the multi-node cluster right and today we are going to discuss how the docker swarm manage the traffic right so let's start with so today we are going to discuss about the routing mesh right but before moving further we need to understand what is the routing mesh in docker swarm so team routing mesh is a mechanism is an algorithm which is used by the docker swarm to manage the global traffic in the last lecture if you will go to the terminal on a terminal if you will execute a command docker service ls then we will see we have executed and service drupal right and that drupal service was accessible on all of my nodes right if you will go to the digital ocean if i will copy any of the ip and paste it in a browser then you can see it will open the drupal home page right this is the website we have created yesterday www.testme.com if i will copy some another ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of node 1 and paste it this will land you on the same page if i will copy some another ip right and paste it here then this will land you on the same page so it doesn't matter where the application is running right if you will see docker service ps drupal then my drupal service is running on node 1 right but still i'm able to access my drupal service on node 3 node 2 and node 1 itself so this is called global traffic management and how docker swarm is managing the global traffic management the docker swarm is managing the global traffic management with the mechanism or algorithm which is called routing mesh so we will discuss what is the routing mesh and how docker is managing the global traffic inside the docker swarm so what docker swarm does docker swarm publish the services on some ports right and allow the outer words to access these services so in the last lecture when we have started the drupal services we have exposed that services on port 80 right 
and we are able to access the service with the help of the IP on port 80. This is called ingress routing mesh, right? So whenever you are creating the service and you want to access that service on the outer world, then you need to publish that service on some port which will be accessible from the outer world. And this all mechanism is called the ingress routing mesh. What ingress routing mesh does? So the ingress routing mesh enables each node in the swarm to accept the connection, right? It doesn't matter that my service is running on node 1 or node n or node m or node k or node n, right? It doesn't matter. Routing mesh enables each node which is connected in the swarm to accept the connection on the published port, right? If we have published our service on port 8080 or port 9090 or port 80. So if you have published your service on any port, if you are accessing that service, right? In that case, the routing mesh is responsible to enable each node in the Docker Swarm to accept the connection on that published port for the specific service, right? And routing mesh routes all the incoming requests from the outer world to the Docker Swarm to the published port on available nodes to an active container. And how routing mesh is doing all these things? Routing mesh is doing all these things with the help of Docker Swarm load balancer, right? So we will discuss all these things uh, with the help of a picture as well. Right now, what we are doing, we are starting in service on a port which is accessible from the outer world and Docker Swarm making that service available on that port on every node, right? With the help of the routing mesh algorithm or routing mesh mechanism. And how routing mesh mechanism is managing all these things? It is managing all these things with the help of the Docker Swarm load balancer, right? So this is the command we have executed yesterday. We have executed docker service create, then we provide the name Drupal, then provide the network overlay network hyphen P 80 colon 80, then the service name. In this particular command, we have basically published the service hyphen P then 80. The left hand side port is the published port, right? And the right hand side port of the colon is the container port. So 8.0 is the published port which is published with that particular service to access that service on the outer world, right? And the internal port is also 8.0. It means the right hand side port 8.0 will manage the traffic inside the container. But the out, but the left hand side port 8.0 will accept the traffic from the outer world, right? So the published port is a port where the swarm makes the service available. And the container port is the port where container will listen the traffic. And we have already discussed that routing mesh listen on the published port for any IP address assigned to a particular node in the Docker Swarm. Now let's discuss this. How routing mesh listen the published port on any IP address which is uh, basically available in the Docker Swarm. So suppose this is the diagram of my service. Right now I have executed my service on two replicas. It means two containers which I have displayed in the yellow color are running the service, right? First container is running the service on port 10.0.0.1 port 80 and my service name is myweb1, right? The second is running on port 10.0.0.2 and port 80, right? So the first one is the node 1 and the second one is the node 2. Node 3 is still not running any container which executing my service. So it means in my docker swarm, I have three nodes. Out of these three nodes, two nodes are running my service and each node is running a particular container for my service, right? Now, if I will access my service on any of these three nodes, right? That particular request will directly land on the Docker Swarm load balancer. And then Docker Swarm load balancer will identify the container where it will route your traffic, right? Why we are calling it load balancer? Because this is balancing the load. Somehow if node 1 is not able to process your traffic, then it will calculate it itself and route your traffic to the node 2, right? So I hope uh, with this particular picture, you are able to get the point how the routing mesh algorithm is working, right? It doesn't matter on which node your container is running, right? If you will access any node, which is available inside the docker swarm on the published port then you will be then you would be able to access your services right this is the beauty of the docker swarm 
you don't need to specify any particular container you don't need to specify any particular node you can access your service on any node which is the part of the docker swarm it doesn't matter that that particular node is running your service or not this is called ingress network or the ingress routing mesh if you want to verify that where your service is running then you need to execute this particular command docker service inspect hyphen hyphen format we are formatting the endpoint specification port then i need to define the service name right so let's execute this particular command so i have uh, typed the complete command docker service inspect then in this particular format and my service name right which is drupal hit enter button and you will get the output like this see this is the protocol tcp on which the particular traffic is routing from the outer world target port is 80 published port is 80 and published mode is ingress right you can see over here so this is the way if you want to identify that on which port my service is exposed on which port my service is available for the outer world then you can execute this particular command to identify the port where your service is running for the outer world and where your service is running for the container itself so this is the answer of the question which we have raised in the last lecture we was able to access our service on each of the node which are part of the docker swarm although my drupal service is running on single node in this particular swarm right so the routing mesh algorithm or routing mesh mechanism is responsible for this kind of flexibility right if your service is running on any of node you don't need to worry about anything you just need to hit a particular dns or you want to hit a particular ip to access your services right so this is all for the day thank you team thanks for your time if you have any question any doubt regarding this particular lecture then please let me know and i will happy to answer thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back in the previous lectures we have seen how we can create the network in docker swarm how we can create the services how we can create the nodes and attach the node to the docker swarm leader right today we are going to post an assignment and uh, in this assignment we will deploy a multi node service so i am going to mention all the possible details which will help you to complete this particular assignment right and i hope you will complete it before jump to the next lecture so let's start with so in this so team in this particular assignment we are going to deploy a multi node service with the help of docker swarm right so there is a very famous distributed voting app which is called docker's distributed voting app this app is basically published 2 years back in 2017 with the docker community and this is the architecture of this particular app this has the five services the front end service voting app which is written in python then we have the back end service result app which is written in node js the front end voting service which is written in python will store the data in key value pair in the redis and that redis will directly communicate to the worker which is written in dotnet right that worker will read the data from the redis and then it will write that particular data in db which is the postgres sql db and result app will read the data from the postgres sql and display to the user so there are the five components of this particular app which is a distributed you can see the all the containers are basically independent from each other right if any service will goes down it will not impact the complete application so we are going to implement this particular multi node service with the help of the docker swarm in this particular lecture so this is the assignment for you you need to implement this particular multi node service with the help of the docker swarm right so i am going to provide some hint that how you can deploy it right and i hope you will complete this tutorial by yourself so we have the five services in this app and these are the first service is vote this is an front end service enables the users to choose between cat and dog you will display two options the cat and dog and you have to vote for these right the second service is redis which is the database for the front end service and it will store the key value pair your vote and vote option then the third service is worker right this service will read the votes from the redis the key value pairs process these and publish these to the postgres sql database right so the next service is the postgres db which will store the votes in the database 
and the last service is result which is a again front end service which will display the results you have voted so these are the five services which will be work as a combination or you can say as a composite application in the docker swarm so we are going to deploy these and we are going to connect these with the docker swarm so here are the hints which you can use so this is the service which is the combination of several docker and docker compose file if you want to review the code then here is the location you need to click this to open the code and you can see this is the repository of docker samples which is the official docker samples repository which is the official docker community repository right and you can see here we have a lot of docker compose and docker emls right so this service is the combination of multiple docker files this app is designed by the docker community and which is available for the public to use so we can directly get these images from the hub.docker.com this is the minimum requirement for this service this service needs one mount point volume two networks and five stack services right so the mount point volume will be used in the db the network will be used as a back end network and the front end network and these are the five services so we need five stack services so first we will create the two overlay network we can call it front end ntw and back end ntw it means front end network back end network then first you will deploy the boating app and you can download the image from this particular location docker samples slash example voting app underscore vote and we need to download the image which is tagged as a before so if you will go to the hub.docker.com so we are on the hub.docker.com and if you will go for the search and over here if you will type docker samples so you can see you are getting a lot of images on the docker samples so here is the docker samples if i will click this then i will get the complete information so this is the community organization which is owned by the docker right the website is docs.docker.com so this is the official repository of the docker samples project from this we can download our images right so the first image is docker sample voting app underscore vote so this is my first image which i need to download and if i will go to the tags then this is the tag the before tag i need to download right you can see this have this image already have 1 million plus downloads right this is the front end app and we need to publish it on port 5000 and container will listen on port 80 we need to publish five plus replicas of this particular service and we need to use the front end network as a overlay network for this particular service right the next service which we will spin is the redis we need to use the redis 3.2 image because this is the compatible image with this particular app redis will be used to store the key value pair data for the vote and vote option we need to publish again the 5 plus replicas or 2 plus replicas for the redis we don't need any port or we don't need any network to provide to this particular redis service the next image you need to download is the worker image right and for this you again need to go to the docker samples example voting app underscore worker and tag latest so we need to download the example voting app worker latest image if we will again go to the hub.docker.com right and we will search for the worker app underscore worker c this is the option so we need to download this particular image and this again have the 1 million plus downloads right if we will go to tags then we can download the latest tag right which is 497 megabyte in size this worker app will process the redis stored data in the postgres and we need to publish only one replica of this particular worker app the next app we need to spin is the db service the image which we will use is the postgres 9.4 we need to mount the volume and we so that we will create a external mount point and we will point that mount point to the where lib postgres sql data why we are pointing this mount point to this particular location i will explain it shortly and we need to publish the db service on network backend network 
publish only one replica of this particular service so till now we have created four services now let's move to the last and next service and next service is result service which is again in web app and we can download the image from the docker samples example voting app underscore result and again tag the before image this image will display the voting results and we need to publish this image on the backend overlay network publish this image on port 5001 and container port 80 publish one plus replica of this particular service so this is the assignment i i hope i have already provided a lot of hints how you can create and deploy these services so i hope you will create and deploy the complete service by your own if you are still not able to deploy it in the next lecture i am going to publish the solution so move to the next lecture thank you team thanks for your time hello team welcome back in the last lecture we have posted an assignment for you i hope uh, all of you have already resolved that if you are not then we are going to post the answer in this particular lecture so in this lecture we will solve the assignment which we have posted in earlier lecture so let's start with so the assignment was to deploy a multi node docker distributed voting app and this was the architecture of that particular app right so what are the part of this services so here we need to implement five services the vote redis worker db and result right i have already posted some hints to deploy the same so as i mentioned it needs one mount point we have already discussed in the docker that how we can create the mount points we need two networks and five services right so first we will create the networks to create the networks you need to execute the command docker network create hyphen d overlay then your network name so we will go to the terminal and create the network so we are on terminal first we will identify how many nodes are connected in my swarm so you can see four nodes are currently connected with my swarm one is down right now we will identify how many networks are running so you can see these are the networks which are running on your machine so there is one ingress network and two overlay network see this is the my overlay which i have created earlier now we are going to create two new networks so create network so we will execute a command docker network create hyphen d overlay then network name first i am going to create the front end network uh oh there is a type of mistake in the create command it's c r e a t e not r e hit enter so you can see network is created i will clear out the console in the similar way i will create the back end network so i just replace the front with the back in the earlier command so the command is docker network create hyphen d overlay back underscore end underscore ntw so you can see back end is already created i will execute a command docker network ls then right now i have the front end and back end overlay network right you can see the driver is overlay and scope is swap again here the driver is overlay and scope is swap right now we will see what applications we need to deploy and how we can deploy them so first we need to deploy then voting app the python front end app this is the image which we want to use this is a web front app which will publish on port 5000 and container port 80 publish five plus replicas so over here i have mentioned the complete command right docker service create hyphen hyphen name i will name my service vote then put the port on which you want to publish hyphen p 5000 colon 80 then on network hyphen hyphen network i want to publish this app on front end network then hyphen hyphen replicas i want to create five replicas then the image name right so i am going to copy and paste the same command on a console docker service create hyphen hyphen name i will name my service boot hyphen p 5000 port 80 hyphen hyphen network i will define front end network then i need to define the replicas 
here we are going to create the five replicas then i need to define the image name the image name is docker sample slash example voting app underscore vote hyphen before hit enter so this will take few seconds to download the image and create the five replicas of this particular service so we have to wait until the complete until it will complete so you can see the three out of five is done five out of five is done it is verifying the stable state of the service and it's done if you will enter docker service ps then define your service name which is vote then you can see the five replicas of this service is running right some are running on node 1 some are running on node 3 and some are running on node 2 clear out the console and move to the slide back the next service which we want to create is the redis so we'll take the image redis 3.2 and this is the purpose of the redis we will create the five plus replicas of the redis and command is simple we need to create docker service create hyphen hyphen name i am going to keep the name redis this will use the front end network and five replicas and redis image let's go to the console docker service create hyphen hyphen name i am going to keep the name redis hyphen hyphen network Network name is front end underscore NTW hyphen hyphen replicas. I'm going to create the five replicas, then the Redis 3.2. This is my image and image version. Hit enter. Again, it will take few seconds to create the service. So you can see it is processing and you will get the overall progress as well. And shortly, five tasks of this particular services has been created. If you will enter Docker service ps redis then you can see the five containers are running on different different host machines right some are running on host one some are running on host two some are running on host three clear out the console and let's move to the next slide so that we can create the third service and third service is the worker service the image we want to take is docker examples example voting app underscore worker latest this will process the Redis data and process this data into the Postgres DB. This will use the front end and back end network. The front end over the front end network, it will receive the data from the Redis and with the help of back end network, it will supply the data to the Postgres. And we need to use just one replica of this particular service, right? So this is the command docker service create hyphen hyphen name. I will name my service worker hyphen hyphen network front end hyphen hyphen network back end. I need to mention both of the networks then the image name why I'm not defining the replicas because there's only one replica required so we need to define the number of replicas so let's go to the terminal and execute this command docker service create hyphen hyphen name I will name it worker hyphen hyphen network define the front end network hyphen hyphen network again define the back end network then we need to define the image name docker sample slash example voting app underscore worker latest is my image name hit enter this will download the image and execute your service so let you can see it is in progress i think this particular image is 425 megabyte in size so this will take few seconds to download and configure your image now if you will verify the service docker service ps worker then we will get the result like this so you can see over here the four services are filled in a row right but still one service is running i can explain it right so the reason is we have executed five redis on the front end network right and this particular service is using some kind of socket programming and socket programming is not still implemented in a proxy way in this particular service so in that way it just compatible with single redis it is not compatible with the replicas of the redis right so it is connected on the redis where the dns was available if you will go to the logs of this particular service docker service logs and define your service name then you will get the socket exceptions see these are the errors and what is and what it is saying system aggregate exception one or more error occurred no device or addresses and you can see there are some kind of socket exceptions socket exception factory 
no such device or addresses so actually it is not able to find out the dns address in the redis so that it is failing on the front end network right only single redis is compatible with this particular service so that it got success on a single redis right clear out your console now let's move to the slide and create the another service the next service is db right so we need to take the image postgres 9.4 we need to create the mount volume and mount it to the where lib postgres sql data this is the hard code value in the image let me explain this so this is the git code location which i have mentioned in my assignment and if we will go to the docker yaml file see docker compose yaml file if we will open this then if we will scroll a bit then you can see it has mounted the db volume db hyphen data to this particular location where live postgres equal data so we also need to create the mount point in the same format right the mount point volume name would be the source will be db hyphen data and this should be the target where live postgres equal data we have already discussed how we can create the mount points right and you can see this is using postgres 9.4 and the container name is db and this should be published on the backend port and only one replica is required so this is the command which you can insert to create this particular service docker service create i will define your service name i will define db then define your network i will define the backend network hyphen hyphen mount the type is volume sources db hyphen data we have seen in the docker yaml file and the target is where live postgres equal data this is already mentioned in the target file this is already mentioned in the yaml file and the postgres 9.4 right so let's go to the terminal and execute this command so docker service create hyphen hyphen name db hyphen hyphen network backend network right define the mount point type equals to volume source equals to what was the source db hyphen data and what was the target target was where lib postgres ql data this was the target mentioned in the yaml file and we need to define the postgres 9.4 and hit enter button uh oh the command is getting failed invalid argument volume for mount flag invalid field space must be key value pair uh oh maybe there is some kind of space error let me figure out so we have the volume so we have the mount point type volume not the bind i will remove the space between these commas source equal to this and target equals to this hit enter and see it is working so there was some space between the comma and the source db right so we need to take care of these kind of stuff when we are working with the docker and docker containers right so you can see the service is ready and it will be stable in very few seconds and service is created and service is created if we will execute docker service ls ps db my service name then you can see the service is running on container on node 1 right now let's move to the slide and execute our last service so this is the last service we need to execute which is result the image what we want to use is the docker sample slash example voting app result before it will display the voting result and should be published on the backend network they should be published on port 5001 and container port 80 and we need to publish only one replica so this is the command we can use docker service create name result network backend port 500180 and the image name right so let's go to the terminal and execute our last service so docker service create hyphen hyphen name i will name my service result hyphen hyphen network i will define the backend network hyphen p port 5001 colon port 80 then my image name paste it over here hit enter button so you can see service is basically in progress so you will get the success message when the service will be created right so we have to wait until the service will be created and you can see it is it has been downloaded and it has been stable in next second so docker service 
PS result and you can see my service is running. If I will execute a command docker service ls then you can see all of my five services are running the db redis result vote and worker five replicas of redis is running five of vote is running rest all the service are running on single replica right my front end service is accessible on port 5000 my back end service is accessible my result service is accessible on 5001 now we will go to the digital ocean copy the any ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of node 3 go to the browser paste it here and access on port 500 right and you can see you are able to access the service right and over here we are also getting that this service is basically processed by which container this is being processed by container which have the id 5 f5 e58265 a31a if i will refresh it you may get the different container see the container is divided this is called the load balancing right docker is internally balancing the load we have already discussed it if i will refresh it it may be changed or maybe go to the same container right every time you will refresh it you are getting the different container right right so basically five containers are running for this particular service so that we are getting the different containers id right now if i will vote for the cat right so you need to click this you can see a right sign is being over here now i will again go to the digital ocean copy any ip which is the part of my docker node paste it here and access on port 5001 which is the result app right and you can see the result over here see cats are getting 100 percent dogs are getting zero percent if i will go again go to the digital ocean and copy any other ip suppose i'm going to copy the ip of node 2 again access it on port 5000 so it will ask you to vote again i will vote for the dog right i will again go to the result and refresh this so you can see the cats are getting 50 percent and dogs are getting another 50 percent so this is the way how you can create the multi-node service distribution on the, with the docker swarm and as we have already discussed all these services will be accessible on each node which is the part of the docker swarm right so this is the solution for the assignment which we have posted in the earlier lecture right if you have any doubt then you can ask your doubts right i am happy to answer so thank you team thanks for your time